Liv. Good morning. morning. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's so lovely to be with everybody again. I think everyone's going to be sick of the sight of me, Jane. Never. Thank, no. Thankfully, you're here today to restore order and proper sewing. Mm. <laughs> to the screens. <laughs> Remains Hurrah! to be seen. Oh, Remains shush. to be seen. It is uh, it's Stitchy Witchy Wednesday. It is. Which means it's you. It's me. And you have something rather beautiful for us. This well, we it. have the Annie's quilt, I've called it. You have? Just, Why did we call it Annie's quilt? Just because I didn't want to call it vintage. I mean, the vintage is the... Um, name of the collection, but yeah, I didn't new want vintage. to um, call it that because it's not really vintage. I thought it was quite modern. And while I was trying to think of a a name, I was thinking, well, we could go alphabetical. Let's start with A's. And as I was thinking that, <laughs> Annie's song came on the radio, Aww. and I was like, that's it. It's a bit sort of there's um, always a story somewhere quirk, you know, a bit sort yeah. of um, countryfied is the word I'm looking yeah. for. So it sort of fitted. It did, and it's beautiful. But we'll talk more about that in a little minute, won't yes, we? Yes. Because you're going to make this for us. I'll Yay! show you how to do the blocks, definitely. And it's very exciting. Um, but yes, Natasha is not here this week. For those who've not been around Monday, Tuesday, some people might not know, you know. No. They might not know. We let her have a holiday. We did. We let her go away. And then um, thought, oh, what have we done? <laughs> we qualify it as a holiday. She's gone off in a horse wagon with two horses and two children. I'm not 100% sure I would qualify that as a break, but for Natasha... She's achiever in her of element. many things she's she'll in be element. in her absolutely element absolutely in her element talking of which i mean i haven't even looked to see who's on today i'm assuming we're live because josh says we're live so it must be true but i mean it, you know he could have just been pulling our leg chain let's see if we can see if anyone's <laughs> about we've got really somebody to say hello to yeah see if anyone's around and wants to have a chat with us that'd be nice wouldn't it be lovely oh so this week yes it's been uh, here we are there are, we are there jane i can see us I can see, I'm turning the sound off, otherwise we'd have a lovely echo of our oh, own yes. selves. Oh yes, well that wouldn't be good. Oh, we've got lots of lovely people with us. Jenny's here, and Myra, she says, I'm in the room, lol. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Lizzie Crangle, she's, she's a full house so far this week. Good. She's done it. Yeah. She says, Jane, you look very pretty. Oh, Jane thank you. Jane very pretty. That's nice this of you to true. say. Yep, Jane and Claire Angelina, she's been around too, you know. I do appreciate the support. <laughs> It's uh, lovely to know brilliant. that you're there for us. It's really nice. Yeah. So, morning, Gemma and Jane. Morning, lovely ladies. Karen Hughes, Rebecca, Rona. Oh, we've got loads of people. Morning, good morning. Morning, ladies. Ready for my Wednesday fix, says Anne Bentley. Oh, oh hi, yeah. Anne. That's hi, nice Anne. of you. Yep, we've got, oh, and more, more hellos, hellos, hellos. Morning from a damp Oreo. Oreo? Where's that? I'm a sh that sounds like a biscuit. Did you drop it in your tea, Barbara? Is that what's happened this We've morning? We've got beautiful <laughs> sunshine here, Barbara. We have. I don't want to rub it in or anything, but it's a oh. beautiful September day here. I'm presuming it's not as beautiful as it is for Anne Roberts, who is watching from Larnica and Cyprus. Larnica mm. and Cyprus. Oh, I bet it's oh. lovely in Larnica and Cyprus. I bet it is. And it's a bit beautiful. of sunshine. Oh. And Joy says, Good evening. From Jamestown, South Australia. Oh no, she did mean Oreo. That's Preston, she says. Oh, I know. Lovely. SJ loves an Oreo. I bought yeah, some Oreo. SJ loves any biscuit. She like biscuit and chocolate she does. and all that. So we Infuriatingly slim. She is. And she, she can uh, eat for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> she loves her Oreo chocolate, though. I bought her a bar last week. Mm. Mm. She, there was a little gleeful face that occurred. <laughs> She's Similar so gleeful face to when she has childish food. Oh, look, Lovely. morning. I'm loving that gorgeous pile of gorgeousness behind you, Gemma. Yes, uh, yes We're going Karen. We're going to show you that beautiful <laughs> pile of gorgeousness. You are going to, to love it, frock. Karen. Yes. Oh, aren't they beautiful? They are beautiful. And these we weren't expecting to have in yet. They weren't going to be on the show, were they? No, they came yesterday. Um, they did, and I stayed really late. <laughs> so just <laughs> tappy tapping, getting everything loaded, because... I just thought we, we can't not feature these because I've been waiting for these. Yes. You know I have. Mm -hmm. um, there is a panel as well as 15 fabrics and I have been, is it, I don't think it's unfair to say, harassing the poor women at Lewis and Irene. Yes. To ask when these is fabrics were going to be in. When are is you it sending on, it? Is it on its way? Has it arrived yet? Arrived? <laughs> Do you know when it's coming into the country? Will we have the panel? Because we really wanted, if possible, to do the panel for this week, didn't we? That was yes, one of the items. That was well, a plan we, in a I plan. <laughs> sort of plan. I did. But I, wanted I think when we show you the panel, <laughs> yeah. you, we won't need to show you what to do with it. It's breathtaking enough on its own, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it just stunning. Are we doing that first? I think we panel? should. Yeah. Because we say the panel, 
the panel is two panels, isn't it? And there's two on the piece of fabric. Yeah. And it's a yard, so you've got two. And you can see what the theme is. Yeah. It's remembrance with the poppies. Just absolutely breathtaking. With the classic, when we go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrows, we gave our today. Yeah. So, you know, it's a poignant panel. Really is. I think it's one that you could make just as it is. You could add, there's a poppy block out there. Mm -hmm. um, you could border it with a poppy block. You did a poppy last year, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did it I with um, that. Yeah, um, it was the, Tud I think we called it Tudor Rose, but we I did, did a demonstration of it with different colors yeah. so it would look like a poppy or it yeah. would look like a daisy. And it was stunning. And actually, if I can find it, I will pop it into the collection today because you're right, if you put those blocks around the outside, you'd have an amazing quilt. You would. Um, and there is, a, there is a slightly simpler block out there called the poppy block, which okay. is... Um, amazing. Would look lovely as well around it. Or just simply border it with some of the gorgeous fabric yeah. that goes with the collection, because it is lovely. I really want to make one of these and, and gift it to my local community hall, um, because they hold remembrance services every year. And yes, to be able I to, think you know, it's... Something um, that you would make and gift, like you say, to your community centre or yeah, your church. Yeah. And they would be delighted with yeah, it. Or absolutely. you could have it yourself to hang in your window each yeah, year. Yeah, out of or, respect. You know. Absolutely. And, you know, it's... I love poppies anyway, but they are such a poignant flower, aren't they? And yes, it's so, you definitely. know, it, perf it perfectly allows you to pay it forward. You know, that we've been talking about paying it forward so much, haven't we? And we yes. will do a little more talking about paying it forward today. Um, because so many people have got on board with that which is yes. lovely. But this is another classic example of somewhere you could, you know, create something to gift that a whole community could appreciate. Yeah. But yeah, we have many, many beautiful Are we going to just show the collections? I and think we should, yeah. yeah. These are really nice lightweight bolts, but we'll go into overhead anyway, and Jane will lift them over, look, and pop this them in one. front of you all. Anybody that knows me knows I love a bee. She and does love a little bee. bee on this one. Do we go close up? We can. We can, you know, and, and we can do that. We, oh, look at you, pro. Look at this. It's in that shot ready. She's got it on the sewing machine. She's not even hovering it. I don't need to hover SJ, it. SJ, we could have learned many things from this here, Jane. <laughs> and you've got no wobbly angles today. She look, just plunks isn't on the it beautiful? The colours. <laughs> is this is this grey or natural? I'm just going to move the bolt just a second. Yeah, I think that one. I've, I've got them on here. We'll pull them light all gray. up. Light grey. Here we go. Light grey. I should put them up. I label all of these. I have. The most super duper labelling gun in the world that connects to my phone. It's dead swizzy. Tash treats Poppies me and things. bees. Poppy and bee and on, on light grey. Black. That's upside down. It's all right. There we go. Let's have it the right way up. Yeah. Look at that. Stunning. That's classic. And you could see this, couldn't you? Border in that panel. Stunning. Well, any of these would work. And then we've got it blue. on blue. And again. Let's get it the right way up, Jane. <laughs> <gasps> Dear. There's no I hope. I put them round so that we could see the tags as we pick yeah. them up. But when you put them on the desk, the tag's facing the wrong way. Yeah. Again, little amateur mistake there, peeps. <laughs> yeah, Poppy and Bee, I think, is just gorgeous. That's and then we've got these, one. which are Poppy Shadow. And this, again, is that a lovely, lovely, lovely collection. I'm going to hold that that way because I think, no, it is that way up. I love a collection of fabrics that you can just mix and match and they blend. They just do all the work for us, don't they? Hello, machine. <laughs> there it is. That's a lovely one. That's a really pretty one. Um, medium scale print, which would go with your collection. And then you've got the red shadow. Beautiful. And that's really lovely. And that would be, you know, just beautiful. nice accent. More or less a, well, it's a tone on tone, so it works yeah. as a plane. It's really nice. Oh, we've got some sort of tears and emotion and loving the panel over the yes. panel. Yes. It is poignant. It is very poignant. Well. I mean, <laughs> Tash did give us carte blanche. And what we've done, our panels and our, our Lewis and Iron prices, you know, we have a pricing index that, and how we price our fabrics, depending on the supplier and, and how they come in. I've actually taken a pound off our usual panel price for that one because I do think it's a pay it forward opportunity and I wanted everyone to, you know, have a little discount there if they want to be able to buy that one and make it for someone else. Yeah. Um, so I have popped a little one pound discount on that one. That's really nice. Well, you know, <laughs> SJ's not woken up this morning yet. <laughs> she says, morning, Elizabeth. Sorry, I think I've accidentally sent you a message saying thank you. I haven't had my tea yet. <laughs> oh, bless her. 
Look at this one. Now, oh, as well dear. as bees, I love a hair. Yes. Now, and Lewis and Irene are um, do a beautiful collection, and there's, there's, they love their hair. It's not too. just any old hair, though. He looks like he's stargazing, but I don't know how. Oh, you can see. Well, I think on the close-up. Can you see the, the little bee? bee? It's just he's it just rings all your bells, bee. doesn't it, Jane? Poppies, bees and hair as well, that's Poppy it for and, me. Yeah. Poppies and hair on light grey. On light grey. We do it on a blue. We do. Which is beautiful. Gorgeous. I can just see that just as a cushion. Look at the richness of the colours as well. Depth of the colour. of That blue is... It's a beauty. It's a real yeah. vibrant royal blue, it is. isn't it? It's yeah. gorgeous. It is. I would, just, I would just make that into a cushion. Because it's got everything I love on it. And can you see how the bees here... Oh, their little buzziness, they've made a little heart shape. They have. Just there, look. It's the attention to detail, isn't it? It's just yeah. so gorgeous. Just there. So there was various really random squeaking, shrieking noises coming out of our goods in department <laughs> at NMHQ yesterday. And I casually heard, well, she was trying to be subtle, Jane saying, SJ, SJ, quick, come and try and record these noises she's making. <laughs> because I was just like... Knees. And squealing quite a bit. I've seen them all. I've seen them online. You know, I've had the, the details We've through. We've been looking at ready. the images, haven't we, for a yeah, while? Yeah, exactly. But still, when each collection arrives from yeah. Lewis and Irene, I just, I shriek quite a lot. There's a subtle um. difference between this one. <laughs> this one's natural. Yeah. Which is sort of like, um, well, like a, I don't want to use the word beige. I always think beige sounds a tone, bit, of, it? but it's it's got a yeah. creamier tone yeah. to it. And then you've got the light grey, which is a blue grey. Oh, I'm going to yeah. say it's a blue grey because we all know that greys have got different colours. It's akin to the grey tones that we had with the Christopher Wilson Tate yesterday. I love so much those blue yes. greys. Blue greys, absolutely stunning. Just always my choice. And look at this one. Now this is our large poppy, and again and we've got this in three colourways. That's on red. It is. It's gorgeous. A, a really love. Well, it's a proper poppy red. You know, it's a real mm -hmm. primary red, and it's lovely. It is. With a darker red background. It looks quite dark on our camera, but it's it's more vibrant than it's coming up on our screen, whether yeah. it comes up on your screen I like think, that. You know, it's dead weird, isn't it? That that, <laughs> that screen there and this screen here, two yeah. different looks. Two different colours. Yeah. Yeah. So what they're, what they're seeing at home is this one. And that... That's grey. Yeah, it is grey. And it's not as blue as it's looking on the screens that I'm no. looking at here. They it is are that, beautiful. But it's the same, it, you know, it, it goes in with the greys on yeah. the hairs and the poppies with the bees. The it's imagery the same. on the website, I think Jane will be able to verify, is much more accurate. Yes. So if you look at these fabrics on the website, the imagery there is pretty close. We all know that our, our computer screens give us different... Of course they do. Give us different images. And then look do. at this one. This is on black. This is classic. Isn't it? I can see this one as borders around that panel with the black for remembrance. It's just <laughs> stunning. Tasha's here, she's just put bunnies with lots of yes. exclamation marks. Tasha, if you want me to save you any of this, you need to shout, because in your absence, I have loaded it to the website yeah, I without don't think a single alone. thought for you at all. Soz. <laughs> I need to put a meter away for her, Tasha. Might have to. For her just stash. Get your order in, boss. <laughs> Send your message across if you want some taking down. And then there's this lovely, that. lovely ditzy print. <clears throat> this is pretty. And I can see um, little girls' dresses with this. This is lovely, isn't it? And again, the variety of sizes would just make your quilting really easy, wouldn't it? To oh, piece yeah, of, you to, know, piece. to choose. Yeah. Have a larger print on certain blocks and then smaller ones. It's and you lovely. could really fussy cut some of your some of your. Ever patterns. sensible. They've called this one Little Poppies. Yes. Because that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and they do it on this beautiful blue. They do. Look at that. That's stunning. Really lovely. So pretty. And then on the on the black, which on again black as well. it just features beautifully with that panel. Absolutely. And would make a lovely gorgeous, top. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Oh, Jan Brown says, Morning to you both. Morning. <laughs> and Karen says, Oh my, these are gorgeous. Are you trying to bankrupt me? I mean, Karen, we'll have a go. Karen, we, um, can, we, <laughs> we can just see you. We reference you. A, we go, in a oh, this frock. would make a lovely Karen dress. <laughs> a Tuesday frock, I feel. <laughs> I bet you've got shoes as well, lady. Come on. Yes. Confess, I bet I'm you've got the perfect sure shoes to go with these. <laughs> that um, Karen will have a pair of poppy shoes. She I'm totally will. I'm virtually certain about that. 
Um, oh, we're going to show the. Oh, Tasha's saying we'll sort brooch. the lighting in the new studio. I'm sure we will, Tash. However, currently you are on holiday, so with the best yes. intention. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Shoo. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Tell us to go away, everyone. That's you, Natasha, not to anybody else. What? Everybody else can stay. Yeah, get your order in then, Tash. She says we're in danger of encountering the wrath of Captain Small because oh. we've not saved any bunny fabric back. Just let me know what you want. We'll let SJ know and then she'll reduce yeah, it. Yeah, it's all text. <laughs> Shall we put we'll some off for you? We'll oh, Lowe's awesome. here. She says, morning. And then she I says know. to Tash, why are you not hung over in a heap eating chocolate cake and fried eggs? <laughs> <laughs> because she's on an active horsey type holiday. I bet you she's been up for hours and has probably been off doing all sorts. And she might even be in a field now. Oh, I bet she's galloping down this mm -hmm. coast on the, against, in the sea, you knowing Natasha. I have this vision of her. Yeah. Just, yeah. you know, More just than galloping likely. in the sea. And gallivanting, and yes, just generally, just, yeah, just being all the yeah, relaxed and enjoying herself. I'm yeah. hoping, I hope so. I'm gonna show I them have this. spoken to her inner field. Do you want to go on close up for that? Yeah, one? let's do close up or above. Overhead, don't mind close up. Yeah, there we go. go. Close, up. close up looks good. There we go. So, we have this as well, and we've had these little Trimits um, felt kits this week. I actually made a poinsettia version, and <laughs> without being you know. Why not blow my own trumpet? I was quite pleased with it. And I really like the quality of it as well. I was surprised, Jane. Pleasantly surprised. I don't surprised. know why you were surprised. Well, I thought it You're would be good. You're a good needle lady. Well, I thought it... No, I, the quality of the kit, to be honest, as well. I, I yeah. thought it would be nice, but it's actually... It's really substantial. Yeah, I think... It's really substantial. Because of the price point on yeah. these kits, you think they're going to be a little bit, but the quality of the felt is lovely. It's a really nice, um, thick felt. You know, it's, yeah. it's a good quality felt. And um, they make lovely kits. And I think they also make nice um, children's gifts as well because they're yeah. simple. They're a lovely sort of taste to make, aren't they? Yeah. An introduction. If this you've is got exactly somebody that's interested in yeah. starting crafting, these are the sort of things that are ideal. This is exactly to get the kind you started. of thing that I started making when I was younger and got me into sewing. I absolutely loved them. And everything's um, in here, isn't it? The thread and the needle. Yeah, it literally just needs scissors. Yeah, and, and the little I mean, clasp is in there for the for making it into the brooch. Sure, the felt shapes are cut out. They're all pre-cut. You get step-by-step -step instructions. You get the brooch pin, beads, needles, thread. And actually, that was the other thing. I wasn't sure about how this was going to work. Um, but the instructions on how to make the beaded centers it was really, really easy. Yeah. Um, I'm, I don't know whether the poinsettia is going to be the same as the poppy. It this looks was like in it's my got bag. a beaded centre. This poppy brooch was in my bag to make up over the weekend, thinking we'd have all the poppy fabrics and poppy makes on next week. And then they arrived yesterday afternoon and I went, oh, oh, OK. And didn't have time to make a sample one last night. So apologies, there isn't one made. But I think you can see how lovely they are. And there is a made one on the website. Um, you could make this, couldn't you, for Remembrance Day? You'd yeah. have it, and you just put your donation into the absolutely pocket, into the into the box for the Remembrance Sunday box. Yeah. So you know, again, sustainable. Yeah. Wear it again and again. And you know, I've I've had this before as well. I got into a bit of a heated debate with someone on the internet once. He got really funny with me, and I don't know why. He's clearly got a bee in his bonnet. But I've bought in the past a beautiful Swarovski brooch that's yes. a poppy because. I like to wear a poppy. I think it's a mark of respect and I think it's important for me that I wear one. But the paper ones, I always used to lose them. I'd go out and then after about half an hour, I'd look down, there'd be a pin yes. and no, no poppy. Yeah, it'd be wafted off. So I bought this brooch and I bought it from the Royal British Legion website. Um, and it was, you know, it was expensive. It wasn't cheap at all. It was probably many, 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 many years worth of poppy donations for most people. And oh my word, this chap was just, you know, slating me for it. Even when I said it was from them, and even when I said that every year I get it out, I put it on my coat and I make a donation online. Because yeah. you can. You yes. know, if I see a box, I pop some pennies in. So it doesn't need to be, does it? No. That you're, you know, you're not making that donation. If you had this, pop it on your coat. Remember to donate still, you know, if that's yeah, what you I choose think, to do. Yeah. And actually then, that gives them another paper poppy that they can I know sell that to someone else. That they um, have re started recycling the, the plastic bits of the poppies, That's haven't good. they? You can send them back and I they didn't will. Know that. Yeah, you can send them back. I think there's um there's an address somewhere on their website that you can send yeah. the, send them back and they recycle the plastic bits. Oh well that's really good, Jane. I didn't know that. We um we have an elderly gentleman who comes every year. He didn't last year for obvious reasons mm. with the pandemic, but he comes every year and he comes and knocks the door. And every year 
we we've got what got our poppies i've got my brooch and we keep the paper ones and we use them yeah we still put the donation in the box and say we've got them you keep those and sell them to someone else yes um because you know it's yeah. more money to be raised isn't it then and Definitely. it's such a worthy cause so anyway here endeth the, <laughs> the lesson the lesson of poppies i'm just pressing the buttons to make sure those poppies exist Lovely. all of you because what are we talking about next are we going to show these um Cute well, mm. yeah, I want to talk about the newsletter. Um, so the newsletter, for those of you who are signed up, you'll know that on a Friday you get notification of our Friday deals and we do offers on the Friday and sometimes over the weekend as well. Now, Tash is away this week, quite busy, aren't we? Mm. Quite a busy time for us. Um, and I spoke to her in a field <laughs> surrounded by horses yesterday to say that something had come in that we've ordered a long time ago um, and that I really, really wanted to offer as crazy deals this weekend. And because she's in a you know, fabulous mood and on holiday, <laughs> she went, if you like, Gem, you know, I trust your judgment. I spoke yesterday about my quilting sort of journey and you'll know, Jane, the one thing I was terrified of doing was cutting my fabric. Yeah. I said to you when we started. And you're not alone with that. I think, yeah. you know, when you were first starting with your patchwork and quilting, that is one of the things that is quite daunting. Once I got a stripology and I got confident, <clears throat> it changed everything for me. But yeah. prior to that, even just to cut squares, to know that they were all the same, it, you know, because if some of them were slightly wonky and with the grain of the fabric and all of that, it used to mess up my quilting. So I went through a phase where all I would do <laughs> was sew together pre-cut charm packs. And then I got a bit more confident where I went, okay, jelly rolls. Because yeah. you've got to know that those strips are right. You've just got to subcut down. Yeah. Um, so I'm a real massive fan of a pre-cut. Now, these are here in, in the background. Um, they're not a figment of your imagination, but they kind of are. Our Friday offers are exclusive to those who read our Friday newsletters. You get to know what we've got going on, when it goes live, and how to, how to get hold of it. But we have absolutely beautiful, shall we just casually wave them? Let's wave them. I think we'll casually wave them. We've got absolutely beautiful items, first and foremost from uh, Tula Pink, line work. So let's go into overhead, I think. Do you? Or do you want to do that? I don't oh, you know. can go close okay. up. Let's close go up. close up there. So we, we have, have got some of the line going, work by... No, these are for the newsletter. We've got some of the line work <laughs> by the meter as well. We have got some left, I think, yes. yes. But these so we've here... Got the layer cakes. layer cakes, your charm packs, your fat quarter bundles. <laughs> that was your nearest one too, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> and Look also that. some jelly rolls as well. And we have got, we've you got know, limited rolls. stock of these. They've taken months for us to import, months and months. It's mainly black and white with um, splashes of what I would call rainbow colours. Yes. So lovely, vibrant. I don't know. You might you just be care? able to see on there. There's some of the like red and fuchsia pink and purple and and turquoise. The really like um, vibrant. But vibrant we do colours. we do have tulip pink line work for people to have a little peep at. And yeah. It's easy enough to get images of. So these aren't live yet. For those who read the newsletter, keep your eyes peeled because this Friday's newsletter is going to be very special. You will have a timetable on there to tell you which days you might be able to snaffle these goods Ooh. because they will go on literally for 24 hours. I will put them on a ridiculously silly deal because she's away and I can. And then I won't be able to hold that price. So it will be a case of, you know, if you want a specific one, keep your eyes peeled go on you know, Friday, Saturday or Sunday for those yeah. ones. But there'll be, in that newsletter, there will be notification of, grab this one on such and such a date. Are We've got there? these oh, yeah, Morris & Co <laughs> Fat Quarter Packs. We have. So these are part of this weekend's deal. Look at that. That's got strawberry feet in there it. There is some strawberry That's called feet. Antique Red, that one. Beautiful, isn't it? It's lovely. And then we've got some of my very much loved Br'er Rabbits. This is Twilight. That. It's got beautiful blues in there. You might have to have one of these, Gemma. <laughs> you can have to look at your Friday newsletter then. Yes. For those who I always do. <laughs> for those who don't have the Friday newsletter, don't get the Friday newsletter, first off, why not? And this and, one's um, <laughs> sea foam. Look at that. That's lovely teals and beautiful blues in there. I'm sure SJ 
assuming she's not crazily busy running around HQ doing something else, I'm sure she will pop details of how to sign up for your newsletter in the feed for you. So they're gorgeous. How many fat quarters are in here? Eight. That's a very good question, Jane. No, ten. Ten. Ten gorgeous. fat quarter bundles. Gorgeous. And I will make sure that those are a, uh, an, an exciting deal. But they will be, each one, assigned to a specific day. Yeah. And the details will be on the uh, Friday newsletter, so keep your Super. eyes peeled for that. Right, is it? Lots and lots of chat going on here. What have we got? It's a half metre heaven got? time now. I think it is. Mm. Do you want to wave those around and I'll see yeah. what they've all got to say? <laughs> They're all telling her to go away. We've got, we've, <laughs> we've, I've been in the, in the wet, because I do quite a lot of the cutting on a Monday and Tuesday, and I've been sneaking things through and going, oh, there's only a little bit left on this, we'll get this one in the half metre heavens. Beautiful. This one is some ahead? of the Love Blooms. Yeah. There we go. With a splash of magenta as the plane. It's not come overhead, Jem. Oh. You saw me there press the button, I saw didn't you, you press the button. Well, it just likes to do it sometime Let's and not others. Let's just move those out the way. So I put magenta with that because I think it really makes these um, butterflies pop. It does. On there. We had so, so that's, much fun with this, didn't we? Yeah. That's Love Blooms Butterflies on Dark Natural with magenta. Beautiful. That's a lovely one. And then I've got the little, there's not many of each of these, so, you know, just, you'll have to be quick at midnight. This is the Butterflies on... Um, summer Green. Summer Green. Yeah. And I put one of our new colours, the Aqua, with that. Gorgeous. Again, because I felt it made this colour here pop. Yeah, um, just really, really showed good. those up. They're really pretty butterflies on here. I can see um, book cushions for little girls with these maybe, or um, a pretty little apron or something similar. Definitely. Um, They're just lovely, aren't they? That one there is actually, I believe, live now. That's one I've grabbed and pilfered and pulled out because you made a similar one. Yes, and well I, I went, thought, we've got a little bit of the Love Blooms on Natural, which is the I wanted to, I called it um, peonies and honeysuckle. And <laughs> yeah, you did. And Jemma was <laughs> like, the oh, we haven't got that <laughs> fabric. And I was like, no, because it might be peonies and hydrangea, actually. Mm -hmm. And we put it with chartreuse. Chartreuse. Chartreuse, yeah. Because it really pulls out the greens on there, which in turn pop the hydrangeas and the peonies, I felt. We have got some of the... What colour is that? That's that one is the peony and hydrangea on blue. And again, and with we the put chartreuse. it with chartreuse on there. So I so you could that. have a metre of chartreuse mm -hmm. and you can have your two and make something exciting well, with exactly. that. exactly. Quilts could be in the offing, couldn't they? With Definitely. These sorts of pieces. So I thought I'd just grab that off the shelf. It's one that we had an extra one of that we found in the move. Yeah. Um, so and the, the other thing I was looking at when I was putting them together, if you went with the... Um, Maybe not the aqua, but the magenta and those two together. Oh, because that chartreuse with that magenta looks delicious. It really does. And they go, again, make a lovely quilt with those Beautiful. two lots of half metres. You see, you were looking at this with quilting eyes on, weren't you? Yes, as well? <laughs> I tend to do that and think, Ooh, what can I do with that? What could I make? Is this one that we've had previously, the Lewis this and Irene Paisley that, Peacock? That it, this is one that fell through the cracks, I think. It didn't oh, right, end up didn't. going to the website. Oh. So it was sat on the shelves, you know, being Sitting there wondering why it wasn't going yeah. anywhere. And it, and I it looked wasn't. at it and I thought, there's no way this has stayed still. And it just hadn't had the button pressed on it. So the button will be pressed tonight. For those who don't know about Half Meter Heavens, actually, because there might be some that are new yes, to us. Yes, new to us. Welcome. Hello, if you're new to us. Um, we set these live at midnight. So, yeah, midnight tonight. In fact, it's one minute to midnight tonight to make mm. sure that they are live. Wonderful. Uh, ready for Thursday. These are our Thursday deals, and we do it every single week. And we have a half metre of a designer fabric with a half metre of plane that's been chosen to go with it. So it just takes that... Not worry, but you know, the, the sort of some people are a little bit concerned about choosing a plane to go with. You know that these have been chosen by Jane or myself or Tash. And I think it gives you a good reference as well yes. to what our colours planes are. Yes. And we always try and choose a plane that will either um, 
blend in or we'll accent it. So we we have a lovely time actually <laughs> choosing the colours. We, we have good fun. Do. Now this um, fabric is um, Spring Fever and I just love it. It's a Jane Sassiman fabric and it's called Tulip Rainbow. Rainbow and I just love it. And Karen, I can see you with a dress in this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, it into not that you could make a dress of a <laughs> half metre pieces, but... Make a um, small dress. I put it with marine, which I loved, which accents really this love. lovely blue here. But I was looking at it, and I actually like the pink as well. So I've done what Natasha does sometimes, and I've done six of each. So I've done it with um, fuchsia, which you can see pops the pinks in there as well. Um, but also, you know, if you bought the two, you'd have a metre of the tulips. Mm -hmm. And these two colours go beautifully together. They do. So you could they do a little four patch there with a square of the tulips. Quilting eyes on, Jane. Quilting eyes. Definitely. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> so, yes, that's Gorgeous. what we've got there. I so love this. It's so this fresh. Week. Very, well, tulip spring-like, isn't it? And I know we're into autumn, but... This is just a lots lovely of hard fabric. Heavens this week. Look at all these. We've They're got gorgeous. lots, but we haven't got many because, as I said, I've been through the yeah. bolts and just said, "Oh, there's only a little bit on here. Can we use yeah. this?" So there are limited numbers of these. Now look at this classic. This, I just oh, and I've put this again with one of our new colours. This is one of the um, they bought a, a set of new colours out, haven't they? And this yeah, is the um, duck egg. It is, which is very similar to this colour here on the on the pattern so I thought that's a lovely calm yeah soothing colour really lovely really lovely very elegant it is with our classic I Morris & Co strawberry yeah. thief what's not to love about that we just love strawberry thief don't we, we do we do it's a favourite as is this next one actually I really love this this is and a lovely I'm not mode a pink girl you know I'm not no. a pink girl but I really um, like this fabric. we struggled a bit with this didn't we because we, did. we were sort of looking at the pinks and we were going mm, shall we go rose or shall we go blush or shall we try coral and then both of us more or less at the same time said well what about bringing these blues and greens out mm -hmm. because it's very pink when you look at yeah. it on its own it's a very pink fabric but then we went to our very classic favourite, Misty Blue, which is not blue and it's not green. <laughs> but you see how it lifts the blues and greens it out does. in that fabric then? It does. Which just tones down the pink a bit. It does. Seems to sharpen everything up yes. as well. You seem to get the detail it's more. So we've got a few of those. Not many. As I say, this is me going through the bolts and going, oh, there's only a little bit left on here. Let's yeah, so just fast use fingers this first, one up. really, isn't it? Yeah. So it looks like we've got loads of half metre heavens, but we haven't because there isn't a great quantity in them. Now and we've found a lovely poppy fabric here. I love. And, and I I've think we've had it before, <laughs> haven't we? We have. I do say that this one is probably named after me. It's called Bossy Mini. <laughs> Couldn't possibly comment. No, and we've not put, at all. We've put that with Scarlet <laughs> simply because it just makes those poppies pop. It so does. And it's, it's beautiful. So and again, you know, that's a lovely fabric that would make a nice cushion or something like that to yeah. have out around remembrance time it or out all the time because it's such a pretty fabric. Do you want a breather? You going to do so? <laughs> I can just quickly say what people are saying, can't yes. I? Give you a moment. Um, yeah, Heather says, good morning, ladies. I'm sorry I'm late. My neighbour knocked and wanted to talk. <laughs> oh, bless. Does, does your neighbour not know? Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, 10 a.m.? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lowe's got the same poppy, and uh, so that's good. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. The, I'd love to see a finished one, actually. Send us a picky if you can dig it out. Claire Angelina says, the paper poppies are nice, but they are rather wasteful. I'm glad to hear that they're collecting the plastic stems. I didn't know that either. I think um, they've only recently started doing it. I read somewhere about it, um, and I think if you go onto their website, there's an address on there that you can send wow. them back to. That's really good, isn't it? Yeah. Good morning, ladies. The quilt looks gorgeous, Jane. As per usual, I will have to catch up as I'm on my way up to the Chelsea Flower Show. Oh, Enjoy. how lovely. Jacqueline. You'll see that, that huge pumpkin. Amazing. There's a pumpkin there that's massive. £800 or something. Really? Yeah. They had wow. to lift it in with a forklift truck. Shush. Yeah, for a part of the display. That's incredible. Because they've never done the Chelsea Flower Show in the autumn before. No. And um, they've, they've all been talking about it on the radio. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Let's have a look. 
Yeah, get that discount finger going, yeah. Gemma. <laughs> I tell you, it's been a busy finger this week, the discount finger. Yeah, they've been finger. like naughty little girls, those two, in the office. They've been like, oh, we could discount that. And, we, and I'm like, you don't normally discount this much when Natasha's around. No, I know, but she gave us carte blanche. Yeah, she so, did. She was know, like, yeah, go for it, girls. on holiday, so it's all fine. She's got that holiday <laughs> vibe. She's like, yeah, whatever. Oh, Claire Angelina also had a neighbour the other day who wanted to chat. <laughs> oh, it wasn't a neighbour. She picked something up from a lady before the school run. She was a nice lady, but she talked... A lot. Well, the trouble is, we haven't seen anybody, have we, for ages? <laughs> so when we see someone, we're like, <laughs> lots of talking going on. As you've all witnessed this week, SJ and I can talk for Britain and you like a chat. And oh, I love you know, a chat. Inga loves a, love chat. a chat. Ash loves it. It's Surprise, we quiet, do any work, really. <laughs> it's not a quiet workplace, is it? Right? No, yet we squirrel away yeah, we whilst do. gabbing. It's, it's a noisy space. Let's have a look at some more fabric, shall we, Jane? We've got some little bits. There's only ones and twos of the Halloween. They literally are the end of the bolt. And I've tried to be a little bit um, different with the colour yeah. that I've gone with it. Just so that it's not too like, oh, it's orange with Halloween or it's whatever. We Black. both let out a little squeal at this one, didn't we? There's actually some moths on this fabric. This is Cats and Cobwebs on dark grey. But there's some little moths here that are lilac-y colour. So I've put it with the, lab is it lavender or amethyst? Amethyst which is the darker purple, which I thought just made those little moths pop out mm -hmm. of there and were just a little bit different to going, you know, oh, well, we'll put it with grey or we'll put it with black. Um, it's it's really beautiful. cute with the cats and the cobwebs. Can we get a close-up on that fabric? Very, because I just very cute. last little skiddly diddly bit, isn't it? The thing I love about this, can you see the jack-o'-lantern pumpkin? He's made to look like a cat as well. Gorgeous. So you can see there the, the moths, and, and I've put that with glow in the dark. That, yeah, glow, glow in, in the, the dark, dark as well. Charge it by day, it will glow by night. And is that not the perfect? cobwebs and the skulls? I think on there will glow. Maybe just the cobwebs. In fact, we have images of the fabric and where, which parts glow. So yeah, when Lucy loads these, Lucy, if you're listening, when you load these, if you could just pop the images of the main fabric as a second image that shows the glowiness. <laughs> Is that a word? The glowiness. The glowiness. Well, you know. We've got you spooky pumpkins I mean. here. And again, that little cat pumpkin is sneaked in He's there. so cute, isn't And he? that's with um, paprika, I think. Yes, paprika. Yeah. It's just a classic orange one. But they're lovely, those. They're really good fun. Um, Perfect for your little Halloween's a little bags, treat bag, so, yeah. trick or treat bag. We've got the cats and cobwebs again on purple. Or bunting as well, Jane. Yes, Are Halloween bunting. Halloween bunting. That's the cats and cobwebs upside down. Well, you know, upside down, downside up. It's and we've fine. put that with Imperial. Imperial. Yeah. yeah, thought so. And again, you're clever with that when you've picked out a tiny accent. Yeah, because the moons on here are that lovely deep purple colour. So again, I, I went with the purple colours. Now, you know, thinking about quilts again. Yeah, that would be beautiful. You could stick your grey If this on one there. didn't make it to the website, that would be one of us, wouldn't it? Yeah. Snatching it to make a Halloween quilt. You could make a lovely little Halloween mm -hmm. throw for just for the weekend or the week of Halloween, just to bring out and decorate your house with. Oh, I know Halloween's not for everybody, but I think it's good fun, you know. If we take it as All Hallows Eve. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, we, we were always really careful when the kids were little. We didn't want to trick or treat because I didn't like the I idea. I love of this story. I love you telling yeah. me this. And it's lovely. I didn't like the idea of scaring people or worrying people. So we always visited people that we knew. And, um, yeah, Megan used to save up all her chocolate. And we used to melt it down and make chocolate crispy cakes. Or we used to make cupcakes and ice them and put jelly snakes on the top. Things like yeah. that. And we'd get a big plastic cauldron and fill it with cupcakes and crispy cakes. And then we'd, she'd get all dressed up in her costume that she wanted to wear because, you know, they wanted to take part. Um, and we'd go around knocking the doors of people we knew or just, you know, neighbours who had seen us so that they wouldn't be worried. And she'd say, pick a treat. And they'd go to get the treats and she'd say, no, pick a treat and hold the little cauldron Yeah, out. and give them a treat and instead. And give them a treat. And, um, and yeah, they always used to go, oh, that's so lovely, and insist on giving her treats back, yes. which was lovely. Um, but it just made it accessible for us as a family when it wasn't necessarily going to fit with our, yeah. 
our values. That's right. Um, but I do love all the imagery around Halloween. We've carved pumpkins and, you know, I, I love, like you say, the cats and things that are yeah. featuring. Yeah, I think it's the festive that. part yeah. of it. And this is a cute Halloween collection. There's it nothing is, gory yeah. here, is there? That's what we We've got the bats on black um, and the where the white trim is on here, that, would gl that will glow in the dark. And I just put that with a classic dark grey. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, you know, you've got a teenage son who's mm -hmm. a bit sort of gothy or something, yeah. or a daughter that's a yeah. bit gothy. You could make a bag or a wallet with this. Yeah. It'd be really nice. And they really would nice. use this all year round, not just at Halloween. No. Um, or a Batman fan, even. And, you know, I have friends whose surname is Batty, and they have bat things in their lives. Yes. They happen to also be in Australia, which is a little bit far. Um, <laughs> but this would have been one for them, for sure. And we've got the spooky cobwebs here with the cats and cobwebs on light grey. And I've put this with a royal. And again, just because it pulls out that little bit of blue and purple that's in on the moths and the moon. Just Absolutely. Pulls and it, it lightens the, the fabric, I think. It's gorgeous. You know, makes it really, really lovely. Again, as I say, we've only got a couple or um, one or two of these um available they, they are literally the end of the bolt and that's it yeah so they you know, you'll have to be quick so as i say it looks like we've got loads but actually <laughs> okay. there's not many of each quantity of each for sure yeah and then we've got the spooky pumpkins and i've put that with gold this one we played around with quite a bit didn't we yeah we and looked at gold. oranges but the yeah, gold the oranges we looked at lifts the, the greens yeah colors, all sorts because there's gold. a like a, a, a lavender color mm -hmm. in there which was quite pretty um but yeah, it just didn't good. do much for it, did it? No. Whereas this threatened it. But the gold, or as Natasha would say, gold! Gold! Um, <laughs> Capital really letters and an exclamation yeah. mark. <laughs> really lifts it. Um, I did, um, a, a, there's only one of these. I think we've got, got one of each of the colourways. And this is the grey. And I just put that with black again, because I thought, it's classic, isn't it? Yeah. And it's not necessarily Halloween. I say, again, if you've got a Batman fan if or... If you wanted to go bats on grey with the black and the bats on black with the grey, again, you've got, you know... You've got the makings of, fabric a, there, of a quilt there mm -hmm. for a Batman fan or someone yeah. that's a little, little bit gothy in their tastes. You can do that Perfect. with that. Perfect. And then we've got a few half metre heaven pluses because we, have. we could. Before we look at those though, Susan <coughs> says she's all, she adores the remembrance panel so she's ordered it along with various poppy fabrics. Oh Love how it. lovely. Susan, you are so in good company with me and Jane. This is, you know, right up our street too. Yes. Um, Jane says, loving the Lewis and Irene poppy fabrics, ordered some and a couple of poppy brooch kits. Oh lovely. Auntie Lizzie also loves a chat. <laughs> we all love a chat. <laughs> She said she'd have a woman, however, insisting on visiting her for her benefit. She would give her monologue for three hours <laughs> and then snap at me if I tried to join in or got on, oh dear, the lunch table set. I have experienced someone like this in my past who oh. would not let you get a word in edgeways. Yeah, we all know people well like that. Because no? I love a good chat. Yeah. Um, but yes. Margaret says Halloween was a thing in Scotland when she was a child. Dad would tell scary stories and we duked for apples floating in the washing up bowl. Yeah, we right. used to do apple, apple bobbing, we call it. Lanterns were with carved. Being very wet and no apple. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Lanterns were carved from Swedish turnips, which are really solid, which yeah. Dad grew on the farm. It must have been really hard to carve a turnip. <laughs> oh my know, gosh. I struggled enough with a pumpkin. Yeah. Dad grew these on the farm as winter feed for the dairy cattle. I love Margaret's story. She's yes, always got great stories. Lovely. Let's have a look at the Half Meter Heaven Pluses, shall we? We've got some Philip Jacobs here and it's called Petals. And it's a really vibrant orange and yellow. And it looks a little bit sort of, I don't know, it's like crackle. You know, you do the paint mm, effect crackle. Beautiful. It's a really low scale print, which would almost act as a solid. Yeah. Um, Brilliant blender. And we've put it with some Macau Spray Time Orange. Yeah. Um, spray Time's lovely because it's not a solid, but it, it again works as a solid. So this is a really low scale stash, but you know, for, yeah. for putting in your stash when you just need a little splash of yellow or a little splash of orange to go with something, I think. And it came out, that daffodil, well, this, they're like the centre of a daffodil almost, aren't yes. they? That came out with Philip Jacobs' daffodil meadow fabric, didn't it, that yes. we've got by the half metre? Yeah. Um, and again, for those to go in with that 
to make a quilt. Yeah. Should I be think perfect, we have this by it? the half metre, do we? Yeah, 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 we do. Yeah, we do have it by the half metre. But again, we thought if we bring this half metre heaven, we know some of you have already bought the daffodil meadow. Yeah. This would go brilliantly that with that fabric. That will work fabulously really with that. So that's a half metre heaven plus. It is. Now, there was a little bit of Tim Holtz left on one of the bolts. And this is the Abandoned 2 Patina in Indigo. And this is just gorgeous fabric. Look at the colours in there. It reminds me of petrol it's on water. Um, Gorgeous. This one's Rue Le Peltier. And I really like the grunges mm. with Tim Holtz fabric. Well, we found this really mm. lovely one, and I can't remember what it's called. It's got a lovely It'll be name. somewhere, Jane. We'll have written Di it on a Dynasty, screen. this is called. Oh, nice. Now look at that vibrant turquoise on there. Just gorgeous. Now, we'd also got... Yeah, the point this of difference is with your Half Meter Heaven Plus yeah. are that we give you that blender that's just a little bit special isn't it same you know? one but then I put it with the Loganberry grunge grunge and again it's got a little bit of the turquoise in a little bit of the pink color that's in here but look at those two together with that they look fab don't they so you've got all of that going on I just this fabric is lovely there's not there wasn't very much left of it no so, no, so let's stick that in and we've got this beautiful grunges to go with that Oh, Karen says that she's got her order in as well because she also adores the remembrance panel and the poppy fabrics. Well, that's all very lovely, isn't it's it? It's nice. Thank you. It made everyone happy today. I yeah. just when I got when they arrived, I thought, oh, do I want to go home and get in the bath? Yes. Do we want these fabrics on the show? Also, yes. Yes. <laughs> but it had to be done. Gemma and I were sharing so texts excited. last night. She was like, I'm so sorry to text you in the evening. I said, Gemma, come on. We both know that we are not a <laughs> nine to five we're company. We're not a nine to five company and we're fine with that. And we love it. Um, we this is Bouquet by, Cass is it Cassidy Demkov? Oh, is it my awful scroll, Jane? It is. Yes, Cassidy Demkov. I think it's on the sell It probably is on the sell yeah, Cassidy yeah. Demkov. It's a cloud nine fabric, it is. which is, They're you know, 100% certified organic cotton. Very, very beautiful. And it's a very unusual yellow. And I kept saying to Jenna, oh, I need something that I'd like, I'd like to, because we were looking at the blues and the mauves in there and the pinks. We were going to go, we we're going to go with our classic rose fabric. I said, no, I really want to pick the yellows out. Have yeah. we got anything? We hadn't really got anything that was quite right in our plain yellows. No, we hadn't. It's that... But we found the Macawa linen effect. I think this one's wheat, isn't it? Is that what they call that one? It Y22. It could be wheat, yeah. yes. I Google such things, yeah. search it all, get it right. <laughs> um, and they that the code. is and perfect. Code. It's beautiful, isn't it? It picks that yellow tone up. And as you can see then, it lifts the, the um, pinks in there as well, which I loved. Again, really we haven't got many lovely. of them. Nope. Nope. It is literally me going through the, the shelves and going, oh, there's not much there. Let's half me to heaven that. <laughs> Natasha Anyone will come back and she'll... Tidy. <laughs> tidy up those shelves. Natasha will come back and go, what have you done with this fabric? And I'm like, oh, we just half me to heaven. This is another little bit of Tim Holtz. Yeah, I hope this she doesn't is... want any of this. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, think about Whoops. that. Whoops. We'll worry uh, about it later. Muted me medallions. Yes. Indigo. Which is very... There's a very tiny little fleck of there is. turquoise in here, but we got the grunge um, seen stars in, I think it's, I can't remember what it's called now, um, tan, which isn't a very exciting name, but that pulls it's out those colours and it's got the greys in it as well. It? And I just thought that, those two together, again, very subtle, very soothing colour tones would make a lovely cushion. There is some indigo in there. You just—it's yes. tricky to see on the overhead. Yeah, you can't really. It's a very small flash of turquoisey colour yeah. in there, but it's beautiful. It is a beautiful. Lovely fabrics. I love Tim Holtz. I think these Tim Holtz are great for like a masculine um, quilt or something like that. You know, wallets or um, bags or something. Yeah. This is another bit Perfect of Philip for that, Jacobs. This is um, ferns green. Funnily enough. Yeah. <laughs> Again, name. this is a beautiful, Look vibrant fabric. The greens in this are almost iridescent. They're just lovely. Really, really beautiful, fresh fabric. And I found this grunge. And I just thought, ooh, that looks nice with that. It, it really, really does. 
lifts it, zesty. adds another zesty, f and it. It's this was mouth lime, key lime, <laughs> yeah, very mouth watering. It was key lime when I saw this. Not many of those either. As a, you know, I keep saying it. Don't made I? Made me want an opal fruit when I saw this <laughs> together. <laughs> we haven't got many. They're we've got lots now, aren't they? Seems it's like we've got nice. loads. No, it does. It but does. But we haven't got many of each. So there's an entire turnip-related conversation going on now. Margaret started all sorts of shenanigans Ooh. over on the comments. <laughs> this is a bit of the um, spooky Halloween from Lewis and Irene, and this is bats on. Blue, purple, on blue. Mm. It's purple. They call it blue, but yeah, it's purple. <laughs> and we've got a little bit of our sparkle blender there. Now, I don't know if the light will catch it and you can see that. Shall we Maybe close go up? close up yeah, on it? Yeah, let's do that. So, <laughs> Karen says that now bats. that her, her poppy fabric orders in, she'll be on bread and jam for the rest of the night. I know. <laughs> I used to have a customer that comes in and she used to say, well, that's it, sausages for tea. <laughs> <laughs> she spent so much money on the fabric. <laughs> Um, look, can you just see that little bit of sparkle on that sparkle blender? And because it's yeah, like, beautiful. again, it's that sponge effect. It's so pretty. And we just felt that it really set off the Yeah, definitely. And with the, with the glow in the dark aspects yes. as well, to have a bit of Absolutely. sparkle. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought it'd be great fun, didn't Classic. we? Classic. Bit of fun. Bit of fun. So that's all the half metre heavens. Though it seems like there's lots, but many of them, there's just one or two of each one. So you'll have to be quick at... Midnight. Fastest, fingers first. Yeah, I put my box yeah, down. The box there. is behind you, Jane. Right, shall we get yeah, some making done well, now? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? You know, I think I'll head over and go and sit in my go and have a chair. Yeah, and I press think the buttons so. for I think me. That's a good plan. Um, we've had a few little comments along the way as well, so I'll just shimmy oh, yes. over there and then you we'll know share those have a with chat me with everybody. Chat. I think that's the way forward, isn't it? Me just gather all the bits and pieces. Can we go on the overhead while you're going across <laughs> and I can talk about the kits? I'm going to pop your iron on as well while I can. Oh, Look that's this. kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> We've got Between two kits. Between as we get there, Jane. We've got two kits today. Um, it's the whole collection of this um, new vintage by EQP is the is the fabric um, make. Uh, and it's, it's lovely, it's ditzy prints, which I, I love ditzy prints because I'm a um, traditional patchworker generally. I love a ditzy print because I love small pieces. Um, and I th sometimes think when you've got a large print, you can lose the effect of the fabric. So I love a ditzy classic, ditzy print. Now we've got two colored ways. I'd say we've got two colored ways. <laughs> the reason really, they're very similar. One slightly more floral than the other. There's a subtle difference there. Yeah, one's more floral and <coughs> one's quite spotty. So I'm going to go over the fabrics with you. This is kit one, and I think, have we called this one floral? Yes, yes we Gemma have. Gemma and I were sort of like, I said, well, <laughs> one's pink and one's green. And she was like, Jane, no, they're not really, they're the same. <laughs> they're both pink and, and green. I was like, well, one's got pink binding and one's got green binding. And well, then we found out the green is not actually green, it's, it's not called green, midnight. It's midnight. <laughs> so let's be clear, they are called Annie's Quilt Fabric Kit. Yeah. New vintage. Yes. And then the one is called floral with pink binding. Yes. The other is called spot with midnight binding. It's quite obvious why, really, yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, the floral, there's more floral in this one, which is the one that I have made the sample that is behind me. You have got seven fat quarters. You've got a half metre piece of the floral, which is so pretty and a half metre piece of our plain ivory. And then you've got a long quarter of the pink ditzy, the deeper pink ditzy for the binding. That is what we would call, I, I, I don't want to call it background really, but I suppose it is, it's like a background of the in the block, it's the, the cream colour. I chose ivory because it's nearer the background on, on this colour. I thought, I looked at the cream, but it was a little bit too dark, I felt, so, and white was too stark. If you prefer nothing if to not go attentive dark, to these details. I thing. love looking at the fabrics and the you colours do. in them. But if you wanted to change it around, you know, it's a half metre piece and we sell all of our planes by the half metre. So if you wanted to go darker with the cream or wanted the crispness of the white, then just, you know, order yourself another half metre piece um, and swap it round. So you've got a pink, three pinks, three greens, and then the, the um, ditzy sort of cream, deep cream colour 
I don't like beige, cut the word beige, but that's what it is. It's it's a beigey, beigey cream colour. I put that in both kits because I felt that um, worked with both the blocks. And then the spot with green binding. Again, Midnight. we've got <laughs> we've got seven fat quarters and there's greens and pinks, but the, it's the spotty fabric rather than the floral that's in there. So I was thinking about this and I think it's lap quilt size. If you've got somebody that, you know, would appreciate a quilt just to put over their knees in the evening or around their shoulders, somebody that maybe ha is um, uses a, a wheelchair, you know, when they go out, they might like something just to cover their knees to keep the chill off. This one could be considered masculine and this one with the flowers could be considered feminine if you want to go down that route. Both of them work. They're both beautiful. They are. Um, you've got th seven fat quarters. This beautiful spotty. I think it's called April Showers, isn't it, actually? Yeah, I think so. They've yeah. all gone into the description. Because it's like spots with dashes. Yeah. Um, shall I go close up on that? Because it's. You I really can. quite like this print. There you go, look. And it's got like the, the shades of green, the shades of pink, and a little bit of yellow in there as well. It's a really pretty print, but I like a modern print as well. So although these are sort of called vintage, this works in a modern way too. Yeah, it's called new vintage, isn't new it? Vintage, Which is yeah. that whole and idea. And then um, we've got the, this is called Love Letters, I think. Yeah. It's got the heart, little hearts on it and little L's. And that's what I've put in for the binding. So in some of the cases, there's a repeat of some of the fabric. So if you bought the two kits, you could really have fun, make the quilt bigger. All the fabrics go together beautifully. Um, you'll see that. So shall we get on and make something? Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? And the quilt that you have behind you, the sample that you've <coughs> made, you've yeah. made in the first option, the floral with the pink yes. binding. Well, I consider and the pink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's the pink one. That's the green one. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate with what I've considered this the green bundle, which okay. is no, it's exactly the same, really. Mm. Same way. It's made up of two blocks. Can we go overhead? Yeah, of course we can. Made up of two blocks. They're the same block. But what I did was, as I turned, rotated one by 90 degrees and sewed them together into pairs and then sewed them into rows and then you get this secondary pattern going on then that sort of makes your eye look at different things. So we're going to make both blocks and then I'm going to show you how I put them together and so you can see the um, pattern Gorgeous. That, that is created. And we'll, we can look at other patterns that you can create as well if you didn't want to do that one because it's the same block and you can just do it different ways. So yeah. all the measurements are in the um, pattern. Lovely. It's squares and triangles. We're going to be working with um, half square triangles. Um, you know me, I like to start with a square and make um, triangles. That's one unit and that's the other unit that go up to making the block. And you make two of those, which you then rotate, and you make um, it makes the block. So it's quite a straightforward, simple um, construction, mm -hmm. but we are making it with triangles. So you have got um, a biased edge that you need to take care of. So if you haven't got any best press or um, flatter, get it in your basket because you're going to need that for this. It really does help. I can't tell you how much it helps when you're I've working with biased edges. I've been the world's worst for this. Even when you're not working with a biased edge, I've been the world's worst for not prepping my fabric properly, Jane. Yeah. And you've been the one to tell me you really it need to do it. Makes such it's, a difference. It makes a difference. It does make a difference. It's not a huge difference, but you will find that your um, it makes life easier for you at the end of the day. Yeah. It reduces the amount of um, fraying. And it, as I say, if you're working with a bias edge, it just makes life that little bit easier for you. Just stabilizes your fabric a little bit more. So I'm not gonna say it doesn't stretch because it will stretch, but it, it reduces the amount of stretch in your fabric as well. So yeah, get those in your basket if you need to. So we are gonna make half square triangles the way I like to make them with two squares. So we'll do this block first, or this unit first, and then I'll show you how I did the other unit. Um, we're going to need the little ditzy beige fabric and our ivory fabric, and we need to mark um, the diagonal 
I'm just going to try and find a pen that I can use to mark with that isn't doesn't really matter because um, you're going to cut on the line anyway so it doesn't matter what pen you use um, the what this is a water erasable one the water erasable and the um, the um, I'm trying to, air, air erasable, air erasable. Yeah. they um, the air erasable will disappear within 24 to 48 hours um, and the water erasable disappears when you add water to it you don't have to add a lot of water you can use um, a cotton bud dipped in water or you can actually get the pens the can't you? eraser aqua pens, aqua yeah, eraser pens which are those. pens that are like little brushes um, with the water in and you can refill those and they can you can literally draw over the line and it will disappear Clever little piece of kit aren't they? it's a lovely little thing to have the thing with the water erasable and the air erasable is if you add heat to them they become permanent which is worth knowing if you're um, using them to um, mark your quilt pattern out with. Mm -hmm. And then think, oh, I just need to iron that because it's a bit crinkly. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit soul destroying. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like you have experience, yeah, experience of this. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but with this, it doesn't matter because we're going to be cutting on the line that we draw anyway. So it doesn't really matter which pen we use. Um, I always mark from the middle out when I'm doing my diagonal line just because it prevents that little bit of stretch that might happen um, top tip there Jean when you're marking these are lovely these are lovely and smooth these sew line pens they really are that's the styler isn't yeah it? I was using it yesterday actually they've got a nice roller ball action on them and they are nice and smooth they are but you could use an ordinary pencil to mark this line if you wanted to because as I say we're going to cut the line anyway so it's not going to have any effect on your sewing as such. Yeah. Um, oh, we've got some we lovely go. comments about your uh, quilt. It looks so much more complicated than those two blocks. You are very clever Jane. <laughs> this is the beauty of patchwork I think because you can get a complicated design from something quite simple, yeah. simple to start My with. My favourite thing. Yeah. <laughs> we all love that. And I, that's why I love patchwork. But I see it now. I, I mean, before, I didn't used to sort of see how things were constructed. I'd see things and go, wow, that's really complicated. I'll never be able to make it. And now I'm starting to see how it might come about, how yes. you break it down. If not, I come and see you and you go, oh, well, Gemma, it's just this. She is clever, ladies and gentlemen. I love, she certainly is. that's <laughs> one of the things I love looking at, how um, a pattern is created. Yes. I think I'm, I like maths and I think that's probably part of it. It's the mathematical geom... I'm not very good at geometry, but the geometry side of it. Mm. I love how everything interlinks and makes... Um, oh. So I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam either side of this line. Now you can chain piece this so you can get your, your two... Because you're going to have to make a lot of these squares. Um, you're going to have to do 32 of them to make but 64. But you through them, you know. But when you're chain piecing, it, re it really does, you know. And it, this is a quick way of making, you're making two in one go, really, with, with one square. So yeah. it is a quicker method of, of making them. And then I'm just going to go down the other side. So, again, I'm lining, I've got the, I've got the quarter-inch um, button on the DX here because... It's lovely with all, with this Juki. You've got your button to make your quarter inch seam, so you don't have to worry about whether it's so clever, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it just gives you the consistency, so you always know that you've got um, the right seam, sort of thing. I, I think uh, you yeah. know, it, having the right piece of equipment just makes all well, the it difference. It make life doesn't easier. It? I mean, this is a lovely little machine, and it's. Um, you know, I usually use the, uh, is it the NX, the NX. What I usually use? Yeah, the big boy, the, big <laughs> the NX. Which is great because it's got loads of fancy buttons, but actually as a traditional patchworker, I don't need that many fancy buttons. I used, I use a straight stitch and that's about it. No, I'm, I'm really excited that I'll be getting my NX at some point soon, but of course I've been using the DX this last couple of days and um, it's just such an upgrade on the machine I use at home and mine's a really good machine you know we're talking 1500 yeah. quid worth of machine but this just makes it seem so you know far behind it's such a beautiful machine to work with yeah. we actually spoke to our Juki supplier yesterday because we speak to them all the time and 
we've been asking for months and months and months have we got sign of any more machines coming through you know it's it's really tricky we just you know everyone wants machines and we can't get them and they they've got the same story from absolutely everyone and the same story for themselves they've had a, a really awful time of trying it's to just get shipping machines. isn't it it's yeah it's, and we've had this this container um shortage issue yeah. and the shipping don't want to to take half empty container ships which yeah. is good environmentally and you know from an economic point of view um so but this has been they've an got issue all these empty on. containers on one side when they yeah. need to be on the other side it's quite um, this frustrating is an issue from brand to brand and just through the whole pandemic really hasn't yeah. it been because lots yeah. of people took up sewing the demand for sewing machines went through the roof mine broke at the beginning of the pandemic i was absolutely livid um, fortunately, Natasha brought me a machine over that she wasn't using, which was amazing. But um, there's been a huge shortage. And yesterday, we finally found that they would give us an allocation. So we have now got the brand new um, models of the DX Wonderful. in stock, back Wonderful. in stock. So for those of you who have wanted to you know, upgrade and get yourselves a Juki, we have got those. Um, we also keep badgering them for more of our lovely NXs. Um, but yeah, parts are an issue and, and demand. Demand is really yeah. high. Lots of people well, learning of course, to sew. You know, lots of people have got back into crafting, haven't they, yeah. during the pandemic. They've, they've had been the at time. home, they've had yeah. the time and the inclination to want to do start crafting again. And then suddenly they get their machine out, which they haven't used for ages. And it's not as good as it could be yeah. and so they've decided they need to invest in new new machines and uh, that's added to a shortage yeah absolutely right so we're going to we've, we've made our half square we triangles did. we cut the, the the square in half along the mark diagonal and we've pressed the seam and i pressed it so that it's underneath the um darker of the two colors and then we've got i've got my little ditzy um love letter fabric squares and i'm going to sew those together in pairs now the first pair you need your ditzy um, um, on the right hand on the yes on the right hand side, but on the left hand side of the square, against the square with a diagonal running from um, top left to bottom right. And then on the opposite one, you need it on the left hand side with the cream the ivory against the side of the right hand side of the square, top right to bottom bottom left sorry my mouth's gone dry because we're aiming to get this diagonal line running through with the two creams on the same side so we're making a four patch but we just need to be doubly sure about how we put those triangles together it's all in the instructions as with Gemma knows right 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 she has to proofread them <laughs> I come sometimes get my left and right muddled I know what I mean but you know what you're describing mean, it. It's all fine. And Gemma will say, Do you mean that should be on the left or the right? I'm like, Yes, yeah, the left. And she said, You've written right. And I'm like, mm, Yeah. I could do with the blocks in front of me sometimes. And that's why, with the block of the month in particular, I make every single one, don't I? I do a yes. test run. And this has been, uh, yeah, one of the moments where you've said to me, Gemma, <laughs> please it's prepare always... your fabric with some spray. Yeah and take your time um, it's always handy to have them laid out in front of you so as you pick them up you've got them in the right orientation and you can just lay them yeah. down and put them together because we all know that with the best will in the world sometimes you get them to the machine and it's so easy to sew them up the wrong seam it's always, it is um, quite um, frustrating so I'm just, I've just chain pieced those. I'm going to snip them apart. I'm going to press the seam to the side under the square. Now, when I want some, a seam to go under a particular fabric, I always press it with the fabric um, that I want the seam to go under on the top. So when I press that and I lift that fabric up, that seam will automatically go underneath the fabric that I want it to go under. And if I do this with all of these and have the fabric going under the main square and again it's less bulk as well because you haven't got that seam on the half square triangle going trying to fold back on itself so it will lie flatter 
It's something very satisfying, isn't it, about knocking these blocks back to create yeah. your new. So we keep piece. them again. I'm just putting them in the in the right orientation so that I know I'm still in the right place with these. I'm making two of these units for the block, and because I've put the seams under the square, when I come to put these two units together, the seams nestle. Now, if we can go on a close up on this, Gemma, I can just talk can. about the. When I'm running the seam across here, I probably can't see it very well. I really ought to use a darker thread when I'm demonstrating. We've got a more or less an X marks the spot here. So when I run that seam across there, I want to be on the, just on the inside of that X so that I know when I run it across there, I'm not going to lose the point of my triangle. Now, if I want to be doubly sure that I'm going to get both points matching, I can put a pin through that where the X marks a spot on, on that side and then I can take it and pop it through on the other side as well so that I've got those that pin lined up and then I can just turn that pin down along that seam line then. And that's another way of just making sure that I'm in the right place because I don't know if you can see but this side is just slightly proud of the other side so if I'd lined those fabric up I might have found that my cross wasn't quite my seams didn't quite match I might have had a little gap again I probably wouldn't have bothered about that because I'm like get it made and get it finished <laughs> um, but I know that there's some of us and I used to be like that that you know I would have had to unpick it and redo it and redo it and all you end up doing is stretching your fabric you do and it never goes together so it's just a frustration and it ends up being chucked in a bag and in a cupboard and you don't get it finished so don't be too hard on yourself if your points don't quite match because when it's in the whole of the quilt um, you know it won't notice no you're in good company we've all done it and I think you know no the trouble it. is we're right on top of it when we're sewing mm -hmm. so we see every little we well, are looking at that one particular seam yes. in that one tiny point, aren't you? Yeah. Whereas when it's part of a quilt with numerous points, of course it's not something that's going to jump out at you. No, and it's also that there's the three foot rule. And generally speaking, when you've got a quilt on the back of your sofa or on your bed, when you're standing looking at it, you're three feet away from it. Mm, um, exactly. So if you can't see it from three feet away, then you're... You, you'll never see it. And <laughs> what is it my family say? A galloping horse wouldn't see it. <laughs> yeah, a blind man on a galloping horse is what my nanny used to say. Um, right, Aww. unpicking. Right, we're going to do, we can do the little twiddle. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. Jane loves a twiddle. I love my little twiddle. <laughs> um, we'll go close up, Jim, if that's okay. Of course. We've got the seam line here. We've got the seam that we've just sewn. We've got this seam line here. If we unpick these few stitches here, there's just one or two on this side and on the other side, just to undo up to the seam line. We're not going past the seam line. We're just undoing that bit there, just there. And then when I take this to the ironing board and I'll just iron it. If I iron that flat, as you would do normally, it's quite bulky where the points meet, but because I've, if I take this over a bit, that's it. Um, because I've unpicked those seams, I can flatten that bit in the middle by making one seam go up and one seam go down. You can only do this if you've nested your seams in the first place, i.e. you've got your seams going in opposite directions. So if you go close up on this gem, you can see there that that's flattened that out and it's made a nice little pattern, which nobody's going to see, which unfortunately, but it, it, <laughs> makes, it, for you, it <laughs> makes it nice and flat in the middle. So Lovely. because I quilted, when I, d when I did these blocks, I quilted along this seam line here. That just reduces the amount of bulk I've got to yeah. sew over there as well. So it just makes life easier all round, really. So we can do that on both of those. beautiful it's just a quick and it's you know it's it's easy to do it's it doesn't take long and it, it just makes life easier in the long run Elizabeth Crangle says you're good at geometry now Jane yes and Claire Angelina says I don't like maths in general but I love maths when it comes to quilting all the quilts I've made so far I've worked out for myself yeah 
Amazing. I think it's 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 a really I don't know, there's something quite satisfying about it. Well, this and is I think why, when we had the, the mocha block, the handmade by Hayley mocha block, yeah. people were loving that. Yeah, because, because all those shapes it and you all can out. really play. It was like a jigsaw. I used to have um, a toy when I was little, and it was all these ge geometric shapes, and it was a piece of, um, I can't think what the word is for the wood now, but it's, it wasn't plywood. Um, and it wasn't cork board, board, but it was like this wood and I had nails and a hammer mm -hmm. and you could hammer these nails in to this mm -hmm. wood and make different patterns. Nice. I used to love that. Gorgeous. It's patchworking before I even knew what it was. Yeah, exactly. We've got these squares now and we're going to cut these squares in half along the diagonal from corner to corner. This is for the other unit. This is this unit now that we're going to make. So I just put these two out of the way. Um, we're going to make this unit now. So I've got the two squares that I need for the two units because for each block you need two of the two units the same of each one. Um, you make eight of each block. So for the for the quilt pattern that we've done, I said to um, to Gemma and Esther, I said you could make it bigger. Um, you just need more fabric. Yeah. Because it's a sort of pattern that you can just keep going with it. So, you know, I've only made a lap quilt size time-wise and everything else. But if you wanted to, you could scale the units up themselves. You know, you could make the actual square and, and all of this bigger if you wanted to. Or you could just make more blocks to make a bigger quilt. Yeah. So, you know, it's quite a nice one that grows quite quickly. Um, it's an easy block to make. But a, a lap quilt's a lovely thing to have. It is, it's lovely. <laughs> just S J only discovered the joy off. of a lap quilt this week. Yeah, just stick it over your knees or, or round your shoulders and on a chilly evening when you don't necessarily I think this time of year is when quilts come into their own because we haven't got the heating on, or some of us haven't. Um but in the evening it starts to get a little bit chilly. Yeah. And so just having something to put round your shoulders or over nice. your knees just takes the chill off there's a lot cozy. of warmth to be found from just having a warm lap isn't yeah. there it's like you know i have my my dogs on my lap yes and i'm so snuggly and if one of them gets off you're like oh, oh it's gone cold hang now. on you it's one of the things i we were talking you were talking about this yesterday about hand sewing your binding yes i and love it love it because you've got the quilt it. over your knee while you're doing it yeah. and it's like when you finish and you take the quilt off and you're like oh got quite cold now i <laughs> really 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 love doing binding and I know it's not everyone's favorite thing oh, but it. it's great it's a I brilliant excuse to put a film on get yeah. snugly underneath the quilt and, and it's a it little off. bit of that mindfulness isn't it because while you're doing that you just rest in and you yeah know, your and mind's I'm just taking some yeah. time I'm the type of person that likes to get stuff done as you know mm. um with chronic illness it's you know I should be resting yeah and this is a way for me to rest and also do something yes. and at the end go look what I did it's fabulous yes. <laughs> Right, so we're going to make the other unit now. So we've got we've cut the um, background ivory in squares into half square triangles, and we're going to sew onto the um, right hand side of the square with the long edge of the triangle running from top left to bottom right. Perfect. So we're going to do that, and again, you can chain piece all of these. Joe Taylor says, Jane, was it a tap tap set? It probably was. You know, I can't remember what it was called, but I just loved it. It's got a lot. Because I like... Um, <laughs> Someone else thinks it was. My dad was a keen di um, DIYer, and I always wanted to be helping him. Mm -hmm. So I quite liked constructing things. And so um, I sort of felt like I was, you know, making stuff like my dad. Yeah. I just like to have a finished thing and be able to look at it and say, look, it's done. You know, yeah. I've, I've done this. I love lists. I make lists of jobs to do and then I'll... In fact, SJ, bless her, she fell foul of one of my lists this morning. There were notes everywhere, all over the place. Yeah, I'd written like, for me? last night saying, you know, take this to studio, do this, do that. And she's come in. I've done them all. I've just piled things up. She's like, are these notes for me? <laughs> no, no, they're not. That's just my little notes to myself. But no, I've just finger pressed that. You could take it to the your iron magic and press finger, it. Jane. You could take it to the to the iron and press it. But I've pressed it towards the triangle. Mm -hmm. Now there's a reason for that, and we'll explain that in a minute. 
And now we're going to sew the other triangle onto the top of the square, but we want to make sure that that diagonal runs along there. At this point you're thinking, well that doesn't fit, but once you've got your seam allowance and you've pressed it away, it will form Marvelous. a triangle. Um, and again, you know, you can chain piece these. This is a lovely quilt to make. Um, I think you could probably, if you just sat down and, and got all your pieces cut, you could sit down and construct this quilt over a weekend. Gorgeous. Um, it's the sort of thing you could take away to a retreat because it's not, it's not over complicated. There's not too many parts to it. You know, you've not got loads of pieces that you will probably, I've done it myself, I've gone to a retreat, taken what I thought, and then I found out I've left just vital pieces at home. Oh, so frustrating. <clears throat> And it's a nice size to work on as well. Yes, it is. It's, it's similar. A, it's a very easy quilt to use on a domestic yeah. machine. You know, you could quilt this and get it finished yeah. quite easily. Yeah. It's it's similar to the other. Which quilt was it, Jane? That I did. We chose the fabrics all in gold and black. Oh, the ripple. The, the ripple, ripple quilt. quilt. That yeah. was it. Absolutely loved the ripple quilt, and it was. <laughs> I did that thing, everyone will know the thing, they'll have done it too, where you just go, oh, I'll just make a start, I'll just cut the bits out. Yeah. And then many, you know many, it. many, many hours later, yeah. like when everybody late else at night, is like, I'm really starving, are we ever going to eat I was today? still in my pyjamas <laughs> that I'd been in all day, because I thought, I'll just cut them out, and then I'll go upstairs and get washed and changed. And I didn't, I just kept going all day. Yeah. And I just kept it, sending you, yeah. a, I'll make a block. Oh, well, that was good, I'll make another block. And I just kept sending you pictures. And at the yeah. end of the day, you went, Jamie, you've made an entire quilt top. Yeah. <laughs> but it was addictive. Yeah, and it goes uh, yeah. together so quickly. This so we've got similar. those made into triangles. Now, if you wanted to, you could trim the ears off there. We've got what should be, in theory, quarter inch seam mm -hmm. for when we join it together. We've got the larger square. We've got pink on this one, and we've chosen the green on this one. Um, and that goes on there. Now this is where you've got your two biased edges. So just take care when you're sewing this. Now what I do is I put the two together and I line up this right angle corner here. This is where sometimes your biased edge comes in handy because you can just stretch it slightly if you need to. Line those up and again we've got, if we can go close up on here, We've got on this side, we've got an X marks the spot where the two seams come together there. Mm -hmm. um, you've got an X marks the spot. So when this seam comes across here, you want to be just inside that part there. Fabulous. Now in theory, you know, your two triangles line up and they match and everything's perfect. But we all know that it doesn't always happen. And sometimes they'll be a little bit different. But if you've, you know you've got that area there too to work towards, it helps you keep it, and you don't lose the point of your square. No. Oh, Margaret's with us. Cat got off my lap last night and I had to grab a shawl. Yes. You thing. forget, don't you, how much they keep you warm. I have blankets dotted all around. Yeah, we've all got throws on the back of our chairs. Are you going to sew another one in a second? Yeah, I'm going Good. to put the... I was going to switch the camera angle no. and I thought, no, no. Sorry, I was just... <laughs> she's, she's chain piecing, I won't I'm change chain the camera angle. <laughs> I love chain piecing, I just, it just makes life easy and you don't waste Same. your thread. And... I've learnt all these tricks from you, so the things that save the time, chain piecing I love, and thread as well, yes. saving the thread, saving but the also... Thread. The way that you make a half square triangle, I was so used to making one half square triangle out of a pair of squares. Yes. And the way that you've taught me to do it, you know, of, of yeah, just drawing that line and then sewing either side of the line and then cutting the line, you've got two half square yeah, triangles. two squares. And less waste. Yeah, absolutely. All about that, aren't we? And it's easier to, you know, when you've got two squares and you make two triangles, you've got less chance of them being out of mm. sync they'll be you know the same stretch you know stretchiness because of that biased edge mm -hmm. oh john cole morgan's with us good morning Hi, john. john he says morning ladies you're all doing the most brilliant job that's very sweet of you john that's very kind so we've got our two units like what i've called a four patch because it is four patches and then we've got our triangle square units we're going to place Beautiful. them together like that so that we've got the triangle formed with the ivory. 
it's very easy to do that, as I found out, and then wonder why the pattern doesn't work. Yeah, and picked a few because I'd done it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to do both of those the same. So again, now we haven't got any seams to nestle, so we're going to pin a bit because we really want to be sure that we get our points matching up here. Um, just because visually, because it's a line that comes together like that, if that's not quite right, um, that's what your eye will see. It won't necessarily see if this is a little bit squiff, but it'll definitely notice if those points there don't come together. So I place them right sides together as I would do, and then I just run my pin along the seam line, making sure that both seam lines are together. Because you've got a light fabric with a darker fabric, you can see how they line up. And I'll probably put a pin in along this seam as well, just to hold it. Just so that I've got my matching points there. Particularly with the half square triangles and you've got a seam, it's very easy for your machine just to push one down. So if you've got your pin on it to hold it, when you start, because you're probably starting at this edge, um, that just stops the machine pushing them away from each other. Now, if you were thinking about it, you could try and press your seam that way, but the fabric will resist you and you'll end up with it quite bulky there. So it is better to press it that way. Although if you did press it the other way, you'd be able to nestle your seams, which would make life easier. Mm -hmm. I think ultimately, it's better to have it pressed away and just pin as much as you can. Fabulous. We've still got people popping in here and there. That's Good morning, nice. Janet. Thanks for saying hi. Myra says, she's got a very useful piece of equipment, has Myra. Oh, has she? I've got a large calculator called Husband. <laughs> I throw the numbers at him. He looks up thinking, gives me the answer. He's never yet been wrong. No. It's all right, isn't it? Um, my dad was an engineer and, and he was the one that always sort of like worked the stuff out. I've got a very handy app on my phone that um, will let me do um, measurements in, in fractions. So I can do like mm. what are two seven eighths when you join them together. and Rather than having to work out what the yeah. decimal is of the fraction, yeah. which is not something I'm a fan of. <laughs> Which for us, as a quilter is just wonderful. Perfect. Well, that's the thing we all need in our lives. I know there is a generation of, of ladies that will know what two seven eighths joined together make, but yes. I'm that I'm that generation that's sort of in in the middle of the two. So I'm not quite fully au fait with decimalisation. Mm, I prefer no, I, I prefer my pounds and ounces when I'm cooking, um, but my measurements. You know, I, yeah. I know what a meter is, but I'm, I'm very good with my inches and my half inches and stuff. So we're going to press those away. And I, again, I would press them to the, um, that way rather than that way, because again, you've got more seams this side. Mm -hmm. So if Makes we press sense. them both in the same direction, when we come to put them together, we turn that one around. So we get this four patch in the middle here. Lovely. And again, you can nestle that middle seam. You may find, because we did the twiddle, that these seams here nestle as well, which is very fortuitous. But Almost you, like you planned it, Jane. You will need to pin your triangles again. Yeah. So again, just run your pin along the seam line. You'll be able to feel underneath with your finger where the seam is there. And obviously, don't stick the pin in your finger, but... <laughs> You'll be able to feel the pin come through, so you'll know you're in the right place on that side. And it does side. seem like an extra bit of faffiness, but it will save so it much does, time, it, won't and it? it and it saves that, like, oh, it doesn't matter. You know that yeah. feeling you get when you turn it round and the seam's not lined yes, up? Yes, Jane, I know that feeling very well. <laughs> it's so frustrating, and you just know you've got to unpick it because you know yeah. you can't live with it. And like you say then it may well not go back together the way that you wanted it to. And no, then you're and fighting a losing battle, which is my, frustrating. My teachers, Chris Francis and Barbara Cheney, they always say to, said to, to us, um, only unpick twice. Because if on the third time of sewing it back together, 
it's, it still doesn't go, it's never going to go together because by the second time you've unpicked it, you've probably pulled it even more to distort it. No, exactly. And of course you can do your little twiddle on the middle of this block as well if you wish to. Hooray, hooray. Unpick those two stitches there. We're a fan of your twiddles, Jane. And that two stitches on that side so that when you press it open again it's just reducing that bulk in the middle yeah which doesn't really make any difference at your patchworking stage it's the but it does stage, help when you're it? doing your quilting yeah you've got a message elizabeth krangle says julia can't watch because of the puppies ask me how i know Ooh. yet is listening to jane say hello to her please as a surprise hello julia Aww. i would love to see julia's puppies in the best I've seen, sense of the word. Yeah, possible. I've seen possible. photographs of them. They're absolutely gorgeous. They're little white fluffies. Aww. They literally are like little snowballs. I'd want to keep them all. Yeah. I just, oh, dear me. So that's block one, the green one. And then we've got block two, which is the pink one. Both In both sets of colours, um, you've got a green and a pink. In the floral one, this is florally fabric here, so it's these, that one would be going there, and this one would be going there. So it's just a floral, and, and the middle one is um, the ditzier colour and the darker colour. So how I planned it with the pattern is that you've got either pink in the middle with green on the outside, or green in the middle with pink on the outside. That was my way of thinking. Obviously, you've got fat quarters. If you want to change it so you've got all pink and all green, it's your quilt. You do what you like. I'm showing you the pattern. You can create it any way you like. The only thing you've got is the border fabric and the um, background fabric is the half metre pieces. Um, again, you can have them in different places if you want to. You just have to think of that quantities wise. Um, you know, you won't get your borders out of a fat quarter piece. If you thought, oh, well, I don't want that in my, in my block, I want it as a border. Um, you might have to message SJ and ask her if we can have it by the half metre. <laughs> <laughs> but Sometimes I have these I've, things can yeah, be arranged. We, can, we have the power. Well, SJ has the power. Right. Right? SJ and Gemma have the we power. Do. Oh, poor I just John. cut it for you. I just cut it yes, for you. Yes, she does. She gets a list and she stands there, chop, chop. It's your happy place, isn't it? Stroking yeah, the fabrics and chopping the fabrics. It. And it's just it's it's not a bad life, is it? No. <laughs> poor John it's is not saying, many people that get to do their job, the, no. their hobby for their job. No, exactly. Poor John is saying, it's wonderful to see you all. My office build is just awful right now. You are a refuge in the storm. Hugs and thank you. Oh, bless him. I was bless watching him. him yesterday crocheting away, trying to calm himself. Bless. Is it manic crocheting oh, in an bless attempt him. at calm? Yeah, he was bless obviously him. having a bit of a trial yesterday and he was... Apparently the puppies are waking up. I think puppies would help John right now also. Yes. I don't not think Andrew is in much agreement, though, is he? No. Because I think John would have a puppy at the drop of a hat. I think so. I, there's not much a puppy wouldn't fix. <laughs> puppy cuddles fix most things, I think. I certainly do. I don't know if you know about cat cafes. Do you know about cat cafes? We've got one in Stratford. Yeah, well, we've know, got one near us at Stone. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's fared during the pandemic, but, um, yeah. Well, I noticed the other day that they're doing a similar thing with dogs and it's a dog rescue where you can go and you can play with the but dogs. But to like bring them all home. Well, you can, you can then, if you wish to, you know, after being vetted and what have you, mm. adopt. Things. Yes, but I'd end up with a house full of dogs and no mm. husband. Well, he said some no people dog. might agree that that's probably a... <laughs> He said no dog. So I got a rescue dachshund years and years and years ago, my Tilly, who was just lovely. And then he fell in love with her. And then Tilly went blind. Aww. So clearly my logic was Tilly needs a guide dog. So I got another rescue dachshund who is Susie, who we affectionately referred to as the tiny terrorist <laughs> for the first couple of years. 
she was amazing for Tilly, but she is a monkey. She dry, she climbs like a mountain goat. She's really naughty. Then we lost Tilly. Um, and now, of course, my dad's very poorly, so he can't have a dog in the house because of his lungs. So <laughs> my parents had rehomed the Dachshund in the meantime. We've now ended up with her with us, Poppy. So, yeah, Guy has put a cap on the number of dogs at two, which we're back up to that quota with mum and dad's dog living yeah. with us. Um, but, yeah, a friend yesterday sent me a rescue Dachshund link. Natasha does it frequently. Yes. And I, oh dear, I sent a message back to my friend yesterday and just said, uh, mercifully rever uh, reserved, <laughs> because otherwise <laughs> husband would not be pleased. I, I think, can't I can't him. imagine that Duxes take up too much room though. No, but they've got massive personalities. It's like that Natasha with, you know, a Danes. <laughs> no, but they've got huge personalities and they are extremely difficult to train. They are naughty. Well, um, they're hounds, aren't they, at the end of the yeah, day? Yeah, they are, they're hounds. They're not an easy dog, but I just love them. And uh, yeah, we are quite experienced with traumatised accents, so. So these are the blocks. Look at those. So you'll sew, um, you'll make 16, you'll make eight of these pink ones and block one, block two. You'll make 18 of each. No, you won't, you'll make eight of each. Where did 18 come from? You'll make eight of each. Um, two of them, well, eight of them, two lots. You'll sew together like so. Block one on the left, block one, on, block two on the right. And then for the, that will be, you can sew them all together like this, actually. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. You can sew them all together in pairs like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can sew them all together in pairs like that. So you'll have eight pairs. When you've got your pairs sewn together, you will turn, you will sew two lots of pairs into rows of four, like so. So you'll have two rows of four blocks. That'll be row one and row three. And then you'll turn the other two around so that you've got block two starting and then block one on the, so block two on the left, block, block one on the right. And then you'll join those in pairs so that you'll have two rows of four that way. So that when you join them together... I'm following you, you Jane. I'm following you, I'm with you. You get row one, row that. two, and you'll repeat that. So you've got three and four, and then you join the top of row three to the bottom of row two. So that makes your four rows for your quilt. So that's the, the pattern I've done. But if you wanted to, you could keep your blocks in the same orientation so they were like that and join them together in pairs and if you did that and again swap the blocks around no you don't need to swap the blocks around you can keep them together um, yeah and you'll end up with that pattern. which looks beautiful also doesn't it yeah but if you swapped them around Oh, you there's end too up many with options that. here, Jane. You see? That's fab And too. this continues that pattern through there. And that's more symmetrical to me. But that will give you a different effect. So before, what, I'm, what I think what I'm trying to say is, before you sew your blocks together, have a play with the blocks and see how you'd like them to be. Because you could do them. Because the blocks that you create are the blocks that you create, aren't they? Yeah. And then how you assemble them is personal preference. That's, the, that's them twisted round the other way. Go back over again, have a little yeah. peep. So you've got the pink, which is more dominant in the, in the middle. And again, you're going to get different effects the different way that you do it. And Lovely. so have a play with your blocks, put them out as, as you think you'd like them to be. You don't have to follow my pattern to the letter is what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Um, you know, the more experienced patchworkers of us will see different patterns. If it's your first quilt, just follow it letter by letter and that's fine. You'll get a lovely effect. But have a play. Yeah. Do it your way. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yvonne is saying, morning both. What a beautiful quilt. I love the material. The fabrics are gorgeous. They're such classic, sort of what I consider classic patchwork fabrics. Oh, I have lots of metric versus imperial conversations yes. going on and... Oh, there was a big debate on Jeremy Vine the other day about now that we're out of Brexit, are we going back to Imperial? 
And they were like, well, no, because the oh, vast majority of the, you know, we're the mass, vast majority of countries are yeah. decimalised anyway. Are, yeah. Um, and I was brought up with and everything the majority metric. of people that are in industry now are yeah. metric. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, there's only, I think there was, there's America and um, I think some of the Caribbean countries that are still uh, imperial. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, this but I did not know. I mean, America is, and this is why we still in patchwork work with um, inches and yards, because mm. the majority of our patterns come from America. Yeah. So that's why we carry on. But if you buy, um, there's um, a quilting magazine that's French, I think, um, and they they work in centimetres. Which when you first open it, you're like, oh, I don't understand this. Yeah, but then when you break it down, it works quite easily. Amazing. Oh, John has finished the scarf. He says it's over 3.5 metres. Oh my gosh, you must have been really stressed because he hadn't done that, that much when I saw no. him yesterday. <laughs> There's a lot of stress crocheting there. Well done. <laughs> He also had a visit from Mr. Prickles, a wild hedgehog, on Sunday. He yeah, is so, so cute. I saw that post as well. He was, he was fully in love with so him. Cute. And he would love a puppy cafe near him. Sad face. Yeah. I think it was in one of the European countries, this um, puppy cafe. Karen's sister-in-law is on holiday in Cornwall as we speak with five terriers. She's a one dog at a time kind of girl, however. Yes. Yeah. Crikey. Um, John loves the last option there that you've done. I don't know whether that is the last one. That's there, the option or... that's the quilt's made from. That's the that's yeah. the layout that the quilt is. Yeah. So yeah, but oh, yeah, as I say, just have a play. Just turn the blocks around, see what patterns you can get. You can, you might get something that you think, ooh, I like that. Yeah, John's made a very good point. Quilt fabric is forty-two inches wide or thereabouts, but sold by the metre. Yes. It's so true. Yeah. But and we all know sizes. how much it is, don't we? We all yeah. know what a metre looks like. Exactly. Bra sizes and men's collars sold imperial. Mm. Yeah. There is a lot, of, a lot of confusion. Yeah, hats Hat too. Size. This and, is true. Um, our, you know, size eight is an imperial measurement. I don't know. It's not eight inches, but mm. I know that it's 42, 43 in metric. <laughs> European. It's enough to drive us all mad, isn't yeah. it? Um, we were going to have one last little convo and a very quick little demo as well, yes. weren't we, Jane, yes. today? Um, because your very beautiful quilt there is stunning. Um, but we had another little make, didn't we, that we launched a month forward, ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Pay It Forward initiative, for those who aren't familiar with it, is something that Natasha wanted to offer because she'd heard that many of you were doing charitable makes um, and she was just really inspired by that and just felt that it was really touching and she wanted to be able to support it in some way. Yeah. So we said that we would bring you a mystery make um, each month. I, last month ended up being not quite so mystery because <laughs> she wanted to let everyone know what it was. Yeah. And that's what Jane's going to very quickly show us now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's our little virtual club of charity makers with a different subsidised make offered each month. Um, you get a pattern, you get your fabrics, your materials that you need at a really amazing subsidised price. Well, I think it's more or less cost, um, isn't it? I yeah. don't think Natasha makes anything no. from it. And all we ask is that you make something in order to pass on joy in some way. So that could be that when you get your kit, you create an item and you gift it to a local charity or you use that kit to teach someone else to sew. Um, if it brings gifts, or gifts joy to another person, it fulfills that brief. Yeah. Um, and this particular one is a little neonatal adorable. quilt. You can um, see it's more or less A4 size, but for premature babies, it's just something for them to lie on that's a bit warm, and they get to take it home as well when they yeah. when they go home. Keepsake, beautiful. Um, very simple, two pieces of fabric with a piece of wadding. It's got to be cotton wadding or 80-20 because it needs to be washed with a hot wash yeah um, so i'm just going to quickly demonstrate how you you make the blanket it's very straightforward they don't want them too heavily quilted in fact they just like the the stitch around the edge like a faux binding they don't want any stitching across the middle of it because it marks the baby's delicate skin yeah makes me sad when i think and about loads that. of you have jumped in and bought these this month um and it's lovely because we know that these are going to be made very simply um, and gifted 
if anyone is struggling with where to gift them to, you can send them to us. We had some beautiful uh, bibs, which was month one, yeah. sent to us um, with some little wipes and things as well. We do know of, you know, women's refuges, of, um, you know, local hospitals, places like that, where we can gift things on your behalf if you prefer. Um, but yeah, it's it's really lovely to see how many people are, are taking yeah, these Yeah, taking up. it on and, and joined yeah. in. It's lovely to see. It really is. And we have the month three package that's launched now that's available on the website today. Um, the costings on that one really are very, very tight. <laughs> Yes. But again, this this initiative is not about making money for us. This is about giving back and just helping those of you that have so beautifully Well, it's about, you know, you supported us and we're just like, yeah. I think many of us made either masks or scrub bags or even scrubs during the, the height of the pandemic. I'm, I know I made some scrub bags. I wasn't quite up to making scrubs because I'm not really a dressmaker, but I could make a scrub bag. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, it... It was a nice feeling to do it, you know, to be to to give something back to the to the healthcare staff that were so busily working and looking after everybody, and it was just nice to be able to do something in return that I could do. Um, right, it's straightforward. It's two rectangles of fabric, ten and a half by thirteen and a half. Mm -hmm. I think they are a piece of wadding the same. I'm just sort of dithering because I'm looking for a walking foot and I'm just wondering whether I quickly change over to the NX because I know that the foot's okay. integrated in Shall that. I mute and see if I can show me the do, NX? Don't you dare pick it up. <laughs> no, well, you know. You come and stand oh. here and look glamorous and oh, I'll move okay. the machine over. I don't know about the look glamorous part, but you know, I can come and say hi. The, um, I don't know if you're going to talk about the kit at well, all with the, you know, the next the, one. Do we tell everyone what this month is? It was supposed to be a mystery thing. That was the original plan, was a mystery yeah. make. That's what it was supposed to be. But it's quite a special make, isn't it? You've, yes, um, I've, you've I've suggested this month, haven't well, you? Well, yeah, because um, I had a friend that went through breast cancer treatment and she told me about these little pillows. Now, I don't, fortunately, thank goodness, I don't know what's involved with mm. breast surgery for cancer, but she told me about it and she's got, she's come through it and she's doing fabulously and I'm hugely proud of her. But um, they take lymph nodes and things out from under your armpit and it's quite sore. Mm -hmm. And she told me about these cushions and they're actually heart, sort of yeah, heart, -shaped. heart shaped. And they fit underneath your arm there to lift your arm to prevent where the scar tissue is rubbing yeah. and causing pain. And I thought, that's such a lovely idea. And, and you can put lavender and things like that yeah. in it as well. So, so that is I brought that to a Natasha's attention. <laughs> yeah. So that kit, you will get fabric and also stuffing in that kit and the instruction. Um, and I've squeezed it to bring it in at the lowest possible price we can. So those are live on the website now. It's month three, pay it forward month three. Um, and yeah, we're really, really pleased to be offering that one. Um, breast cancer is a big thing in my family, unfortunately, and in my husband's family. My, my lovely mother-in-law has gone through it twice. Oh um, and yeah, her sister twice as well. There's a the huge amount. My gran, well, oh, my gran didn't live to be as old as I am. Um, so I never met her, which is a real shame. I'd have loved a grandma, but um, yeah, it's, it's a really noble choice this month, Jane. I really am, you know, pleased that you found well, as I say, I mean, that inspiration. I've been very fortunate that I've got um, distant family members that have gone through it mm -hmm. and I'm my best friend. But fortunately for our family, yeah. there is no touch wood, there is no gene for it. So yeah. none of us have ever been affected directly. No. It's, um, so, yeah, I'm purely... But I just, when, you know, you know, I, I think we all know about the, the effects of chemotherapy, about the hair loss and how um, that can affect people's confidence. And obviously it's not a very nice thing, chemotherapy. It's basically poisoning your body. Yeah. Um, but we, 
forget about the actual surgical side of things. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when she told, I didn't know that they removed lymph glands and stuff like that, you know, and it was just, when she was saying about these cushions, I was like, oh, that's such a lovely thing. And she yeah. said, you know, there's a whole group of ladies that, you know, when they get their sewing group together, they'll do a month where they just make, you know, a day in the, in the month of the group where they just make a load of cushions and then donate them yeah. to the um, breast care ward and, or, you know, the char local breast charity that... Yeah. They know and I think it's such a lovely thing. It really is and actually even if there's been no lymph node removal I I had a mass um, oh, was seven years ago now um, and it, it was in a duct so it was the safest place it could possibly be with the family history of course there was a lot of panic amongst my friends and family and hysteria but I felt really okay about it all as much as you possibly can but they took the decision because of it being in an tricky position to get to for a biopsy really that they would just do the surgery straight away especially with the family history um, and I had all the ducts taken out on one side mm. now I didn't have any lymph nodes removed or anything like that because at that point what they were doing was removing the entirety of the mass and all the surrounding ducts and they were going to biopsy it so it's a surgical biopsy effectively yeah. but also they were taking everything anyway and a load of other tissue um, but I had a big hematoma, probably through being that person that won't sit still and mm. doing too much afterwards. And this cushion would have just been lovely to sit there because I had so much like internal bleeding, isn't it? A hematoma, yeah. big bruising. Um, it would have been a really lovely thing to have there and just, just pad. Relieve, yeah. Yeah, take just the to pressure take the off. pressure off. It would yeah. have been great. Yeah. Um, so no, I think it's really brilliant. Lovely. But we're going to overhead. Okay, so we've got our three pieces of, we've got the wadding, um, the backing fabric on top of the wadding, so the wrong side of the backing fabric, obviously with a plane it doesn't really matter, um, right side facing up, and then the right side of the patterned fabric facing down. So you've got your three layers. And it's simply a case then of sewing around the edge, but we're going to leave a gap wide enough to get your hand in, so three, five inches just between. So start at the one edge and work your way round. I used a quarter of an inch seam. You'll need your walking foot on, um, obviously because you've got the wadding. Just want to go backwards, get the right stitch. That's it. And so it's, it really is just going around the edge. When you get to where you think the quarter of an inch is, just stop, pivot your fabric round, and then carry on down. From, I think we gave two half metres, did we, with the um, fabric? This was enough. The kit was enough to make four blankets. I was going to say, I think. I think you'd make four blankets yeah, out of I think of it kit. was. I'm just thinking of Karen. Karen's so fast at making those, uh, those cushions that she does yes. on her stall. I've seen like She's so fast. She's a whizzy. 85 cushions. Yeah. Amazing. So if you're a speedy sewist like uh, like our Karen, crikey, can you imagine how many of these you throw together super quick? You might want to pin the three layers. Um, don't use spray adhesive, obviously because of the chemical within yeah. the spray adhesive. So if you're going, if you need to pin your layers together, keep your layers together, then just um, pin them. Don't the don't grease. yeah. <laughs> try try not to um, don't use your um, Spray adhesive. Very tempting to think, oh, I'll just whack a bit of spray yeah, adhesive spray on there. But We had a lovely time choosing the fabrics for these as well, didn't we? Yeah. So we got some together really what we thought was ones. Uh, so good for a baby. You've gone round your three sides. Just snip your corners off, taking care not to snip into your stitching. My wadding's moved slightly on mine, but again, it doesn't really it's matter. It's a quick demo. There's no pinning with that. No. <laughs> and you might just want to trim the wadding back 
close to the stitch line, just the wadding. Again, just to remove some of the bulk out of there. So I've just got my scissors up against the edge there, taking care not to, to um, snip into the scissors, but just snipping that bit of wadding away. And, and you can do that on all, all sides if you want it to. This is another example of a brilliant beginner make, isn't it? You know, yeah. My God, I mean, if you've got young children that want to have yeah. a go at sewing and make something that they feel that really you know, proud of yeah. that has real value as well. This I is just, something they could do because yeah. it really is two rectangles with yeah. a piece of wadding in the middle. And they'll pull like that through the gap. Little quilt. Yeah. You know, it's, what a what a brilliant thing to do. There have been a lot of children actually taking up sewing during the pandemic, haven't there? That they yes, and I think want to make again to help other people. You know, they've watched they've watched grandparents or even parents having a go making things and, and thought because they may not necessarily have seen them doing it before no. because they were out at work or you know they were at school all these things and they don't do they don't do um, these sort of things anymore do they home economics or um, sewing as such not so much it gets all lumped, school is when it comes lumped into more, isn't it? TD doesn't it mm. technical design and they spend more time on the design and the the um then they do the making of it and the technique i mean we had we had specifically sewing classes mm. woodwork classes and home economics whereas i know that my son he his was technical they design seem, and it lumped all three of those my, into one my daughter one class. did have did have the separate classes but it was it was one it was one class, but then they'd rotate in terms. So they'd have a yes, term of one, what, a term of yeah. the other, and then a term of the other. That's what um, Isaac did, yeah. But to be honest, it was too little too late, I feel, because it was secondary school. So, yes. you know, they're 11, and they've sort of missed the boat a little bit. When I was in primary school, oh, I remember, I remember sitting um, <laughs> with my friend Joanne, and we had a horrible piece of uh, brown ada and some different colours of yellow and orange and some beads and we had to sit and just practice lots of different embroidery um, stitches yes. to, you know, do a slice of orange or a slice of lemon or something like that. And yeah. they taught us to chain stitch and all sorts of things. Um, and we sat there and Joanne and I were, you know, quiet for an entire afternoon, probably aged nine or so, and um, finished in the afternoon stood up to go and show our teacher our work and put it away for the day and she'd embroidered hers onto her skirt mm. and it was attached to her skirt and she um bless her of course the only way to get that off is to cut all the stitches yeah. she was heartbroken I well, can cut the skirt. Yeah, yeah. but i just remember her being heartbroken and really feeling for her because we were so proud of what we'd done i wonder if my mum's got that somewhere i'll have to ask yeah John told me a story about, because he used to do costume design and he was frantically sewing something one evening to get it finished for the next day and he sewed his dressing gown to it and he said he just cut his dressing gown away because yeah. he hadn't got time to unpick no. it. <laughs> so that costume had still got a piece of his dressing gown Love on it. his side. I thought I'd have been inclined to do as well, I think. You would sew up the um, gap by hand using a ladder stitch or an over sew stitch. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll just press that under and then you literally just sew a quarter of an inch inside around the edge you can make your stitch a little bit bigger just um, you know like a quilting stitch you could use a coloured thread you could even use one of your fancier embroidery stitches just to make a little bit of a pattern but as I say they don't want anything in the middle because of the baby's delicate skin or just leave an imprint well, I've just had a very exciting message. Oh, have you? <gasps> for those who've managed to stay with us for two hours, well done. <laughs> but you'll be pleased you have, I think. Um, Jane, you know, we have the reconditioned NXs that we try to get in diligently. Yes. And every now and again, another one becomes available, but they've been in really, really short supply. Yes. Um, we did get notification that we had some available from Juki when we had a conversation with them. It was end of last week. Yeah. Um, for those who've been on our waiting list, we've sent emails out, we've given them priority opportunity to have a purchase. There's been some very happy people in amongst those. Oh, some who still want to wait a little longer for financial reasons or whatever else, and that's fine too. But we have one, one NX, reconditioned NX. Now, these 
have been taken back in, they've been fully serviced, you get a warranty, and you save, I think it's around £1,000. Oh, wow. An original oh, retail price. That's amazing. Phenomenally good value. I've got one on order as well. I could have this one, but I'm happy to wait a little bit longer. I've paid for mine. I'm happy to wait a little bit longer because I know there's some of you who really, really, really wanted one. So that is going to go live on the website now. Um, if no one buys it. <laughs> It's like, oh. No, I'm, I'm happy to wait. I have got a machine that's doing what I need it to do for now, but oh, I can't wait to get it. Um, I've just said, so long as I get it by Christmas, Jane, I think I'll be good. Yes, yeah. I just, I really would like it for Christmas. But this particular one, if you've been looking to get one at that amazing, amazing price, and they really don't come up very often, um, grab it quick you know it's going live on the website now sj's gonna pop it top of the collection please sj if you would um yeah yeah they're a lovely machine they're so and um, the thing i love about this machine more than anything else is that integrated walking foot yeah there's no hunting for the walking foot what have i done with it where is it now i've How got to unscrew it? everything and put <laughs> it all on you literally just pull that lever down at the back it's just amazing it is the most amazing machine isn't it yeah i mean it I said before, it's got all these fancy stitches on it. It does alphabet, it does lovely things. But for me as a patchwork, it's just straight stitch. But it's this gap it's here. It's the big throat, the isn't The big it? throat yeah. is just amazing. You can roll the quilt and get it in there. That's the thing for me that sold it because I've worked with a DX and I love it and it's brilliant, but I just wanted that wider throat so that I could get the quilts in. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's the biggest, I wanted. The, the most amazing thing about it, really. So, well, there are many, many amazing things about it absolutely. that we have not scratched the surface oh, on, no. Jane, we need to know more about. It's, a fabulous, but, um, it's just a fabulous machine. Yeah. If you can yes. afford it, yes. you know, go for it. And if it is something you've been looking to do and you've been saving for and, you know, £3,000 is a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. Anybody's money. But these reconditioned ones, you still get the warranty. They've been fully serviced by Duke, some parts replaced, etc. Um, so they're as good as new. They're amazing. And run in. I yes. always say this about cars, you know. Yeah. So this to my husband. All the little tweaks me, have been done, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, this would be like getting an ex demonstrator. Someone's run it in for you. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. I am going to skip, skip, skip past you, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> because I need to check that no one said anything important before we leave them. So you can see that's quite, that's quite a straightforward, easy make. It doesn't take long. And as we said, you can get four out of your fabric that we've given you. So, you know, you could have fun. And if you've got some stash that you think, well, I'll just make some with a different colour underneath or something like that, then you can do that as well. Um, yeah. I yeah. And John's asking, are month one and two still available? Um, we've still got them on the website. And yeah, we do our yeah. very, very best to yeah. uh, make those. We'll up. Try and it those may as we be can. that we withdraw those soon um, because I think, you know, to have lots and lots of different months running might yes, be a little I bit. Think, you know, I think the tricky the plan was to have one month at a time. It but, was. It was. Um, yeah. Um, I think month one, we may just be able to squeeze a few more because of the toweling. Yeah. That's the I thing with that. We're low on toweling. Teensy weensy bit of toweling left to be able to do that with. Um, so if anyone does want month one, order that quick, I would say. Um, oh, Janet did hundreds of scrubs bags. Uh, how lovely. Yeah. Just so nice. Uh, Miss Pay It Forward 2, where was I? Probably head stuck in the fridge. Well, Myra, you've just seen Pay It Forward 2. We do still have those on the website. So, um, yeah, yeah, we, we can, can absolutely those. make those one up still. I think your local um, Skaboo, Special Care Baby yeah. Unit or Neonatal Unit would love them. Absolutely. My Meg was teensy tiny and they're just anything yeah. that they can receive, little tiny hats as well that are knitted, they're just really, really grateful for these things. It's, uh, and as a parent, when you have a teeny tiny baby and you're given something, yes. to be able to keep it in well, their memory have, box. Yeah, just have so something special. soft. And I mean, they put the um, so absorbent blanket things underneath, but to have this as well is just so lovely. Yeah, really lovely. Just a little bit something personal. Jane, you've really worked today, you know, well done. I've earned me, I've earned me wages today. Yeah. You've worked really, really hard. Yeah. Got all of these extra little demo -y bits, but yeah. uh, it's a quick and easy make, isn't it? It's a yeah, nice, it's very one. straightforward, very simple. Oh, we have and breast cancer stories I mean, as well. People are appreciating your choice for block for month three. So yeah. It's a great, it's a great one there. Um, We've all got scraps of wadding as well, haven't we, at home that, yeah. you know, 
this size that you think mm, it's too big to throw away but actually it's too small to make anything with so you know it has to be cotton is what I'll say or the, yes you know but um and we have that wadding available as well if you yeah. do make your four that you can make with your kit and then think well actually I you know I want to make some more we've always got wadding available it's the Lisa Lena 279 it's our 80 20 yeah um wadding. it'll do because the 80 20 can be can be hot washed so that's okay. Um, Claire's just asking, could you quilt the front to the wadding and then attach the backing on the three sides so that there's no stitching on the back and the wadding is sewn in place so that you can have a quilted pattern on the front, I suppose. It, mm. But then you'd have to sort of, I would, think would people know to not put it pattern size, you know, yeah. stitched size down, side I think down? The thing is they don't want any quilting in the middle. No. So I think doing it this way is just, it's the easiest safer, way of doing it. Doesn't it matter really. which it way they place way. the blanket. Yeah. Then it's, it's yes. yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, people are loving my nails. Also, well done, John, for spotting those. <laughs> yes, they're beautiful. <laughs> and lots and of people talking about um, yeah, sewing and cooking and woodworking and things like that. Yeah, I think that all life skills should be taught, and hopefully, we refer to ourselves as adult Blue Peter, don't we? Yes. Um, I'm hoping that we catch some of the. Uh, the missed out bits from school. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I suppose we ought to do a proper Blue Peter goodbye now. Bye bye, yes. boys and girls. Goodbye. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. And Look um, out for your Friday newsletter. Yeah, please Some do. Bargains. Please do, because don't the forget your half meter businesses. heavens, because as I say, there's not many of, it, of any of them really. <laughs> um, we've got, don't forget, you know, the half meters from previous weeks, there's still a few bits of those left yeah. as well. So. Have a route round in the half meter Have heavens because you know these projects you might not particularly like the fabrics but these would be great for the for the yeah. using up your half yeah. meters that you bought the half meter but you know i'm thinking why did i buy that yeah they'd love it yeah, they'd love know. it and bright colors are always nice for babies too really nice really nice yes yeah. yeah so uh blue peter bye bye goodbye bye bye boys and girls <laughs> see you see again. you next week yes see you soon bye